Sports has put Jack, Luke, and Quinn Hughes on the cover of NHL 25, becoming the first brothers to be on the cover of the NHL series. It's time. It's time. Tuscaloosa's longest running sports show. The biggest goal of our team, especially in the first half. We at Bama, we're trying to be the best. Always is to win a national championship. Something cool to look back on. We don't want to waste a failure. You're inside the game. The game. John Mechie on the ground. Appreciate your interest in the game. On your home for Alabama sports. Alabama wins. Tide 100.9. And streaming on the Tide 100.9 app. Powered by Tuscaloosa Toyota. And now, now, here's your award-winning host, Ryan, Ryan Fowler. And a big good afternoon to you. Welcome into the game. T-Town Tide 100.9. Remember to download the Tide 100.9 app. It is a free download. Android, iPhone, Google Play. And you can listen to all of our shows. Morning 6 a.m. when Wimpet Bear, excuse me, with Martin Houston. Wimpet Berry at 7. Leading you right into Gary Harris at 9. Leading you right into Wyatt Fulton with T-Town Sports Daily from 11 until noon. The Miller's Edge with Corey and Christian Miller from 12 until 2. And then we pick it up every day starting at 2 o'clock. And then we're also the flagship station of Alabama Crimson Tide football and a lot of the sports uh, that you hear right here, whether it's Alabama football, Alabama basketball, or Alabama baseball, or all the coaches shows. So you'll have access to that because we do have uh, the streaming rights. Today, we're going to dive into a lot of different things. We'll talk to Rodney Orr. We'll talk to Brad Powers coming up at 4 o'clock, and then we'll take your phone calls. We'll go back to a little bit of the sack numbers, but I think we'll also move ahead. Uh, at this point, when you're nine days away, can we celebrate? I mean, we're dancing in the streets. We've got down to single digits, guys. We've got down to one Bryce Young, the first Heisman quarterback for the University of Alabama. Roll Tide, Roll Tide, Heisman winner. Nine days away. If you want to go a little old school, you can go Freddie Kitchens. Uh, Bigger quarterback, bigger than most, but uh, Freddie Kitchens, a solid quarterback, and I believe he's over in Columbia. He could be at, I was about to say Columbia, South Carolina, but he actually may, he may be at UNC, but I know he's still coaching uh, there, and, uh, you know, when you look at Freddie Kitchens, but we're going to start uh, with going to Miami of Ohio, because Chuck Barton is a a football coach. I was about to say a great football coach, but I don't even know if he's a, even that, but I'm sure he's a solid mind, right? Chuck is just the high upstanding uh, sets on the second row of the Baptist Church there locally, so he's he's a good guy. He's great, high character, but he's made some allegations against the University of Alabama. Graham Nicholson was there last year. He was the place kicker that had beat out Will Reichard for the Lou Groza Award, and Chuck Martin had a little comment about Graham Nicholson and how he was recruited, and then we'll let you hear Kaylin Abor's response to that. All right, special teams, lost your kicker. Carter McLaughlin. He's at, he's at, we didn't lose him. He's at Alabama. We know yeah, exactly, I understand we know exactly that. where I, he's at. Like, I, I, we, again, uh, you media people, it's all pretend. Like, no, Alabama stole our kicker. Uh, I, they, yes, illegally, they, they illegally recruited our They don't. illegally recruited our kicker and stole him from us. And, like, that's that's a fact. But that's that's how, But we act like it's not. We live in this la-la world. Like, hey, let's not oh, talk. Re- I don't know why there everybody knows what's going on. So, yeah, Alabama stole our kicker. <laughs> A um, couple, other, a right couple other schools tried to steal it, but then they go, okay, what's the Let's question? Talk okay, so, uh, you know, if you go back, if you study Chuck Martin, Chuck Martin was part of Brian Kelly's staff in 2012 when Alabama spanked them and prevented them from winning a national title. So there's probably still some bitterness when you see that script A. A lot of people have bitterness when you see that script A, that Alabama logo. But K1 Boer responded, uh, and I say responded, he was asked a question about you know, did he have a response? Uh, Tony Sakalas, you'll hear part of that. Uh, he asked the question very simple. Um, hey, they're accusing you guys of tampering, and this is how Caleb DeBoer responded about an hour and 45 minutes ago. Uh, I don't know anything about that, I guess, that comment. Um, yeah, I mean, he entered the portal, and we reached out to him. So uh, that's how it goes, right? So uh, we did everything the way you're supposed to. Okay, so that's very brief, but um, when you look at the portal, and I, I get it from a standpoint of being a small school. When you're uh, at the MAC, when you're uh, in that small school, that environment, you didn't Chuck Martin think that this was going to happen? I mean, you've got the Luke Rosa Award winner coming back, and the world that we live in in college football, not saying tampering would have happened, but if you're going to play at Miami of Ohio or play at any of a bigger school, because kicker is one of those that's highly sought after, right? You need a solid kicker. Alabama needed one of those in the portal. And Graham Nicholson uh, chose to come to the University of Alabama. Can you blame him? 
I mean, just for a minute. I mean, those guys up there eating peanut butter and jelly sandwiches and macaroni and cheese after practice and down in Tuscaloosa, they're having lobster. Can you blame Graham Nicholson? No. Uh, And I get it from a small group of five team. We've almost given them a seat at the table. I wish college football would kind of man up a little bit and say, listen, if you're one of the 12 best teams in the country, then you get a spot. If you're not, uh, we're not going to give you a spot. You don't earn a spot. And and maybe this would be a frustration because I've still I've often said we almost govern a lot of things are prevented because, well, the group of five can't afford it. Well, we can't implement that. I mean, we're just now getting iPads on the sidelines. Why? Because the group of five couldn't financially swing it. Uh, Why did we allow analysts now to coach when we didn't do it three or four years ago? Well, very simple. It was it was all about the group of five financially. They could not afford it. But we offer them a seat at the table, but really they're not invited. I mean, is anybody going to be watching a five against a 12? Uh, will you have a team out there that will maybe do the Boise State, Oklahoma thing, uh, Statue of Liberty play from, what has that been, 20 years ago, 15 years ago? A number, right? It's, it's significant time. Uh, but, but we all pretend that, hey, these guys deserve a seat at the table. Really? Do they? I mean, can you really look at them and say, yes, you're one of the best 12 teams in the country? Or could you say, you know, that number 12 in the actual poll would be there, or 13 is better? Because in your mind, that's where we're at. That's why we're at 12 teams, because we couldn't agree that eight was the best team. So we're giving everybody a seat at the table. Uh, It's it's almost like we have a little socialism in college football. We want to spread the wealth, not just financially, but make sure that you have a part. Well, I can't afford to be a role. Well, you're still going to get a seat at the table. So when we look at the group of five, uh, I know it's frustrating. I get it. Uh, but it's going to continue to happen. I mean, what's it going to slow down? I mean, the, the bottle is out or the genie's out of the bottle. It's it's not going to be put back in. Uh, and Chuck, for your information, I'm sure probably Kaylin Abor could get up there and whine and cry and bellyache and moan and groan and talk about Caleb Downs. And he could talk about, you know, Isaiah Bond and he could go through a you know, probably half a dozen players talking about tampering and talking about schools calling because it does happen. I mean, I'm not saying that Kaylin Board did or did not do, but it does happen in the world of college football. I mean, we're naive to think that it doesn't exist, but you cry about it or you just move on. Uh, Chuck Martin chose to cry about it and then make the allegations. So, uh, Chuck, if you've got more evidence, we're listening, we're waiting on it. Uh, you know, if you want to show us some text messages or uh, before – you know, when you look at Graham Nicholson before he put his name in the portal, uh, can you provide some evidence to us? I mean, if you're going to make those allegations, if not, uh, keep your mouth shut, right? So, Chuck, we appreciate you. I'm sure you do a great job there for Miami of Ohio. Uh, but, hey, at the end of the day, you're going to make these allegations. So we'll see. We'll see. I don't know if it'll go anywhere, but I know it's been the topic of conversation. Uh, we've also got people predicting whether Alabama is going to be in the college football playoffs. I saw Ralph Russo yesterday in the AP. He had Alabama nowhere to be found. Dan Mullen had Alabama at number six in the league. Are you kidding me? Six in the league. I also saw a couple of minutes ago where 247 Sports put Alabama as one of the, when you look at talent composite, talent composite, that Alabama right now at the top of college football. Let that sink in just for a minute. Does that sound like a team is going to finish outside of the top 12? I think when you look at that, it almost stops you in your tracks. The program that Nick Saban has built here uh, that handed off to Kalen Boer, the talent rich, uh, when you look at the talent Most talented teams in college football, according to 247 Sports, composite score, uh, Alabama leads all of college football. In other words, there's more talent on this team than any other team in college football. Let that sink in. Uh, Georgia's second, Ohio State third, Texas fourth. By the way, yesterday, uh, Brett McMurphy on our show said that he didn't think Texas was going to be a part of it. So we're finishing up talking season as we get down to the single digits. Uh, But rounding out the top five is Clemson at five. Eh, why don't we go through a few more teams? Six, Oregon, seven, Texas A&M, Oklahoma at eight, nine, LSU, 10, Notre Dame, 11, Penn State, 12, the University of Florida. So we'll talk more about that as we look at uh, the 247 Sports. We'll talk to Rodney Orr, Brad Powers coming up. Nine days away, brought to you by Alabama Credit Union, alabamacu.com, checking, savings, mortgage, home equity loan, financing of vehicle. Alabama Credit Union reminding us to remind you, we are now seven, de- excuse me, nine days away, one Bryce Young away from Alabama Crimson Tide football and also Tuscaloosa Toyota powers the program each and every day. The 2025 Camry, 3.99 APR for 36. 
and the new 2025 Camry averaging over 50 miles per gallon on the highway. You can see the dealer for complete details. The Tundra 1.99 APR for 36 with a $2,000 loyalty cash. The third annual Tuscaloosa Toyota Golf Classic happening September the 9th through the 15th. Old Colony Golf Complex. That's going to be the LPGA qualifier happening here in our town. So a busy month of September. We're going to get things started coming up here in just a couple of minutes. Rodney Orr. And then we'll right back to your phone calls. We'll take those and we'll also mix in a lot of Kayla DeBoer audio. Uh, some things that really grab from, from our perspective. Bull sports. And you're too late, darling, you give love a bad name. Now, this hour is West Alabama real-time news update from the Tuscaloosa Thread Newsroom. Police are investigating after an unidentified body was discovered decomposing behind a shopping center in Northport Wednesday. Mayor Walt Maddox has given his 2025 budget recommendations to the city council. They include higher water bills, raises for all city employees, and the creation of an unprecedented drone first response team. Finally, the demolition of the downtown Tuscaloosa News Building is likely to begin in October to make way for the Saban Center. For the details on these stories and more, Get connected at Tuscation. Experience the wow factor. Contact Shoot Masonry and Specialties at 205-887-3807 today and unleash your home's full potential. Tide 100.9, Tuscaloosa weather. A partly sunny sky this afternoon, the chance of a few isolated showers through the evening hours. The high today, 89, the low tonight, 68. Then for tomorrow and Saturday, the sky's sunny both days. Afternoon highs very close to 90 degrees. I'm James Spann on the ABC 3340 Weather Center on Tide 100.9. Where college football season never ends. Next week, whether you have a press conference on a Monday or Tuesday, it's all about a depth chart, right? We, I mean, us, there is nothing in the media business we get excited more than a buffet line is the depth chart, okay? I mean, the buffet line gets us excited, but I'm telling you, if you offered the typical college football writer, analyst, sports talk radio, TV guy, uh, if you offer them a great meal or a depth chart, they're going to take a depth chart, okay? I'm just telling you. I mean, you could offer them a Big Mike's ribeye. And you would literally say, nope, I'd rather have the depth chart. Okay, the depth chart. Uh, K. Winterbore talked about that. We'll let his audio speak for itself coming up in about 15 minutes. But uh, he said at some point we'll release a depth chart. But there's still some competition battling, right? And we'll let's talk about it here with Rodney Orr, TiderInsider.com. Some competition and some guys that you'll see, some new faces, TiderInsider.com, the editor, the founder of the incredible website, TiderInsiders.com, T-I-T-V-W-V-U-A, each Tuesday, 6.30 on the replay, 10.30. Rodney Orr, I hope you're having an amazing Thursday. Welcome into the game in Tuscaloosa. How are you doing, Ryan? I'm good. I'm good. Here we are, nine days away, nine days away. Single digits, Rodney Orr, single digits. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think, didn't you put, uh, somebody put out Bryce Young's picture today. I did, I did. Yeah, I had yeah, the, yeah. I had, I took the Crimson Crane, the, you know, the Karate Kid look, the, that's what I use. So, uh, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I could go back a ways. I'm trying to think number nine. Of course, you know, Freddie Kitchens is probably a popular number nine, but I go back. Jim Bob Harris, you know, going back into the 70s, back-to-back national championships. He was a great player. You know, I don't know. Before that, probably be harder to come up with somebody. But but there are a few good nines. We're getting close. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. Eight, obviously, Julio Jones. Seven, you yeah, would probably yeah, go with yeah. Jay Barker. Uh, yeah. Six, Devontae Smith. And then, uh, I mean, five, Andrew Zow. Andrew, yeah. Andrew yeah. Zow would be yeah. a good one. Yeah. Now, Jarrell Harris. Yeah. I mean, you, I mean, now it's a little bit easier, a little bit easier. But, uh, Rodney, I want to ask you about the news of the day. We look all over college football. We've played the audio from Chuck Martin, which is the Miami head coach, uh, accusing Alabama of tampering. And then K1 DeBoer's very simple response. No, he put his name in the portal, and we contacted him. It's, it's that simple. Uh, you can understand the frustration from these smaller schools, but uh, it's a big allegation when you say that, uh, you know, they illegally recruited him. Yeah, but I mean, I guess so. It's, uh, uh, you know, it's just a process of the way it works. Now, I, I very seriously doubt that Alabama made any personal contact with him. You know, there's ways to, to work around that where it's not direct contact, Ryan, where it's really not, uh, you know, probably not illegal uh, to do that. I mean, 
you know a lot of people in the in the business and you know you can say hey you know we'd be interested in that guy and you know then all of a sudden uh things kind of escalate and whatever but i mean there's different ways to do it but but as far as this goes ryan i mean you know gary gary harris and i we, we talked about it four or five years ago when there was the the hint that this portal was coming and as I, I said, look, many times on TITV and probably said it on your show here that you're going to basically have to have a retention staff because they're going to keep recruiting players uh, after you sign them. You know, once they get into their careers, if they're not on the field, they're going to there's going to be a lot of contact and all of these things. So, I mean, this isn't something what what he's saying isn't really anything that's a revelation. I mean, you know, players leave, they they get opportunities and they hear it through the grapevine different diff- different ways uh you know to, that leads to them transferring and so that's just the world we live in when you look at the, the the side of things i mean you know you you could probably find every coach in the country could come out and say well listen somebody tampered with our guys but I mean, as you said it's this is you don't think around. ohio state made some kind of contact with uh caleb downs or julian you know? saying or isaiah bond or isaiah Texas. bond yeah, or sure mari Martin I Black, I mean, it's 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 just the way it goes, man. This is just the way it is. There's no boundaries. This is why it's frustrating for coaches everywhere. Uh, you know, I understand the guy at Miami of Ohio. I understand his frustrations, but it's with every coach. And so, I mean, this is right now until they get some kind of grip on this, uh, it's, it's really what I think part of what makes probably college coaching not as attractive. Rodney, uh, A.K. Deer, committed to the University of Alabama speaking and can kind of continue on the recruiting side of things. Uh, you've been talking about him for probably three months now. When you look at him as a guy that keep an eye on, he finally decided to go ahead and pull the the, uh, the plug and say, hey, I'm going to the University of Alabama. How big of a pickup is this? Yeah, first of all, Ryan, he was the, he was the last Firecracker 5 member to make his decision. So, Have you already no, hit all, but- all five? No, no, it, it, this year wasn't quite as good. It was three of five. But, you know, I'm beginning to think, Ryan, in our present climate of this thing, three of five probably isn't bad. And to be honest hey, with that, you. That, that'll get you in the playoffs, Rodney. I mean, three out of five. Get you in the Hall of Fame in yeah, baseball, yeah, right? Yeah, it will. It will. I mean, that, it'll put you there. But but listen, here's the thing, Ryan. There was a few guys that I would have gone with in, in, in that firecracker five that committed two or three days before July 4th. That kind of messed me up. My pool got really shallow on me so i didn't have a lot to choose from that's not an excuse it's just the way it kind of unfolded but anyway ak deer great player uh you know you look at him uh you look at his size i think maybe six feet he's got the frame he's got 200 pounds right now but he's got the frame to even get a little bigger a little thicker you can see that uh very explosive player dynamic with the ball in his hands makes a lot of people miss runs with power He's just got a lot of versatility, great hands. I think he'd be a real good fit for what they like to do in this offense and the way they like to use their running backs in multiple uh, ways. So, uh, A.K. Deer, a big pickup. Again, a, another kid from Mississippi is composite, I think, a five-star composite. When you add them all together, average them all together, and I think at the end he will be definitely a five-star according to most of these services. But him and you got the other kid uh, from Ackerman, Caleb Cunningham, five-star receiver, so doing pretty well in Mississippi. Here we are, uh, final couple of days of practice before you get into game week. Uh, Kalen Boer seems to be just judging, and, and we're still learning him. He, I think he's a very positive uh, half-full guy rather than a half-empty guy, uh, but he just seems like he likes where his football team is at. I mean, we saw it second scrimmage on Saturday, and we see it again today. Yeah, it does does seem to be a positive, uh, like you said, by nature. Uh, but no, I think you get a really good feel, um, you know, with uh, where this team is right now. I, I think that they've made a tremendous amount of strides. I mean, uh, Ryan, when you look on both sides of the ball, I think a lot of people were saying, "Well, we're we're what about this defense?" And I think there's still probably some some questions. Like you've had Nick Saban for 17 years, and now. You know, you're going to a different coach with Kane Womack. And I will say this about Kane Womack now. He is seems to be extremely in, in energetic, you know, if you want to be that way, intense. Uh, I watched him in a few drills. He jumped in on some position drills 
saw him on the defensive line and a couple other positions the other day, and he was bringing a lot of uh, intensity with him. And that's what they say about the scrimmage, Ryan, last Saturday, that the defense was, oh, uh, I mean, some of the hitting was brutal, violent. I mean, really physical. And, you know, here's the thing I think about, Ryan, because, you know, we uh, I was kind of thinking back, and you remember 2012 when Ole Miss came over here to play Alabama as Hugh Freeze, his first year as head coach at Ole Miss, and I really wasn't piecing things together. But Dave Womack, uh, of course, his father, uh, Kane Womack's father, was the defensive coordinator over there at the time. But I really remember because that, Ole Miss was outmanned that, that night. Uh, and, and Alabama just didn't play extremely well, but but the physicality of that Ole Miss defense really got my attention. The 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 the, the younger Kim Dietschy, I forgot his name, uh, Robert Kim Dietschy's young uh, brother, uh, the, the the smaller one. He he really brought the wood. I mean, it 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 just that defense. Uh, if it's any kind of indication of what we might see from this defense uh, in terms of the physicality, it was impressive. Let's talk about the competitions in this final couple of days. Um, Rodney, we won't know until we get a depth chart, but uh, what are you glued in on? I mean, if they they handed you a depth chart, where would your eyes go first when you look at some of these key competitions? Uh, You know, I probably would look. I'm going to start off at right tackle, and I'm just going to guess here. It'll say Wilkin Formby or Elijah Pritchett. That's just a guess. I don't know. Um... Yeah, I think they're probably, and I'm going by the sound of things. You know, we've seen every time we go out there, Wilkin Formby seems to be getting most of the reps with the ones that we see, and that's a 20 minutes snapshot. But so I see him a lot there, but I, but I think it kind of seems to be just listening to what they're saying that they're going to allow this competition to go into the early part of the season. Uh, you know, but but I would say probably right now, if you ask me. Who do who would I think would probably be out there that first snap? I'm going to going to just guess Wilkin Formby, but I want to look at that and see what it says on that depth chart, like you said. Uh, but also, you know, the wide receivers, I'd be interested to see how they kind of slot them. Um, you know, but I think everything else we pretty much know. I mean, it doesn't really matter if it's Jam Miller or Justice Haynes. I mean, I think they're both going to get their carries and their opportunities, and Richard Young will be in there somewhere. Uh, but on the defensive side, um, you know, uh, again, I, I, who's number one at that corner opposite of Damani Jackson? Is it Zabian Brown? Is it Deshaun Jones? Uh, you know, we'll see. But I, but I do think that it's going to, going to be really interesting. What I think, Ryan, is um, how many guys do they play? And I'm talking about not just in these first two games, but as you move forward. You know, are they going to play more guys than what we what we normally saw, you know, in the past? And and that's going to be something that I think is really interesting. Rodney, I want to go with a couple of different things here. We're talking about sack numbers this week. We went with total tackles earlier in the week, and I'm going to try to ask you to kind of project, in your opinion, uh, when you look at sacks. Uh, that's going to continue the conversation today, and I know there will be people that are looking for hints. Uh, you and I were talking about this earlier today on the phone because when you look at sacks, you could probably go a, quite a few different ways. It, it seems like, mm-hmm. you know, last year you could say, Dallas Turner, that's easy. All right, what number? Uh, this year's a little bit more of a challenge. Yeah. Yeah, that's another thing. I mean, um, and you're, <clears throat> you're asking individual players. Yeah, yeah. I could I, – well, I mean, if you go by the scrimmage, I guess we could say LT Overton, <laughs> he had a – that first scrimmage, I think he had three sacks or, or let, more. Let's, let's stop right there because I, I mean, let's pick back up. But are you surprised with this much buzz around LT Overton? I mean, you you followed him out of high school. You fought him at Texas A&M because, I mean, he has been kind of the theme of this fall camp. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I'm not surprised necessarily because he was the number one player in his overall class. I mean, when he was coming out of high school, he was the number one prospect in the country. And then he reclassified uh, from, from – he actually skipped his senior year. So when he reclassified, he was still a top ten player. So, I mean, I'm not really surprised from that standpoint. I, I don't know how they exactly used him at Texas A&M, if that was to his best uh, – you know the way the way they had him. I think he lost some weight, and they 
we're using him dropping in coverage some and maybe more than what he would normally want to be doing. But I think now he's going to be used more as a pass. He's going to get a lot more opportunities to rush the passer. Uh, he's gotten bigger. He's 280 right now, I think, somewhere in there. Uh, so, man, I'm looking forward to seeing him. I hope he, you know, lives up to that, uh, you know, the ranking that he had coming out of high school because that would be really good for the defensive line. But, yeah, I, I, I'm looking forward to seeing him. All right, pick back up with the sacks. I didn't mean to interrupt you, but, I mean, LT Overton has been the buzz of camp. But uh, who, yeah. who else would be some candidates that you would look at? Well, uh, you know, I, I'm really wondering uh, if with kind of the way they have these three inside linebackers, Deontay Lawson, Jihad Campbell, and Justin Jefferson, I'm kind of wondering if one of those guys ends up lining up outside some to rush the passer. I think Jihad Campbell was a guy that came here definitely as an outside linebacker. I thought he was going to be an outside linebacker. They moved him inside. So maybe he's a guy, you know, Ryan, that could be – guy that racks up a lot of sacks or maybe they put justin jefferson out there some with his speed and his ability uh i don't really know but uh, those would be two guys i'm trying to think if there's uh really in anyone else that jumps into my mind of course we know Quandarius robinson and keanu could have been around a while uh they have some pass rushing skills but uh it's going to be really interesting to see how much quay russell plays uh i, I think he's going to play definitely at that outside spot i just don't know how much right now uh but he's got all the tools i mean he could be a guy that quay russo could be one of those guys in this uh, conversation that you're having that's another 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 big name uh we also went earlier this week leading the team in tackles uh you could probably go a couple of different options there whether it's deontay lawson uh jihad campbell uh, you might go somewhere else at the safety spot because it seems like the safeties are going to be heavily involved in this offense Oh, excuse me, this defense. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah, I, I would go uh, Lawson, uh, you know, possibly Malachi Moore is the ab. You know, you mentioned the safeties. Uh, you know, those would probably be some guys that would jump out at me. Just some, just some options. Well, Rodney, the next time we visit, uh, it'll be game week. Uh, we will be here at Western Kentucky, Alabama, and then uh, kind of getting the season started, this K1 of Boer era off to the uh, off to the races. Uh, TiterInsider.com, the editor, the founder, the incredible website. Also, TITV, WVUA, each Tuesday, 6.30, 10.30 on the replay. Hey, Rodney, always enjoy the chats, man. Thank you so much for being a part of our show. Hey, Ryan. Appreciate it. Take care. Thank you. Rodney or TiterInsider.com. I do remind you about the standard pizza, home of the 20-inch pizza pie, pepperoni, meat lovers, cheese. Design your own. TheStandardBama.com. You've got the mac and cheese guy bites. You've got the cheese sticks. You've got uh, great wings, boneless wings. You've got uh, many different things to choose from. TheStandardBama.com, a full-service restaurant. Also, order online. You can have pickup uh, available there. Also, delivery by DoorDash. TheStandardBama.com, TheStandardBama.com, home of the 20-inch pizza pie, pepperoni, meat lovers, cheese, design your own. We're talking more college football with you. We'll take your phone calls. Going back to this Miami thing, when you look at Miami of Ohio, a lot of comments coming out about that. A lot of, lot of reaction. K1 Boer said, hey, he put his name in the portal. We contacted him. As simple as that. We'll continue with more of the game. More audio. How would fourth down? Because I thought this was a great explanation. K1 DeBoer is one of those guys. I think I've talked about it multiple times. I look back at Texas, uh, fourth down play, where they lined up, called the timeout inside. It's about the 35-yard line on their own 35. Early in the game, it wasn't late in the game. K1 DeBoer called a timeout brought UW to the side, went right back out there, and I'm like, okay, he's going to bark him off again. He's going to try to – Michael Penix is going to try to bark him off and get this. No, no. What did they do? They snapped the football, and they ran it right up the gut of Montez Sweat. Said, you know what? We know, but we believe in Parker Brelsford. Thank you very much. They picked up the first down. It wasn't even close. Uh, so it was one of those first signs. I'm like, whoa, wow. All right, uh, he takes a little bit of gambles, but uh, he says that uh, really he doesn't think he's above the average. You'll hear the odd sports. Go and 
inside the Alabama Crimson Tide with the Gary Harris Show. Hey, everybody. It's Gary Harris coming up Friday morning at 9 a.m. It's the TGIF edition of the Gary Harris Show, and are we going to be cranking it out for you? The voice of the Crimson Tide, Chris Stewart, will join us for an Alabama football preview, plus Larry the Music Man and Brett Pritchard with the Auburn Report, and your phone calls as well. That's Friday morning at 9 a.m. on the Gary Harris Sleep. Oh, Get matched at Mattress Firm. Sleep at night. Restrictions apply. See store or website for details. DanielMoreArt.com. Daniel Moore Art celebrates those special moments of Alabama football history like 4th and 31, Jalen Milrow connected with Isaiah Bond, or the legacy continues with all the great memories of Alabama Crimson Tide football. You can celebrate Coach Saban with a Nick Saban print, the limited edition canvas. You could also find many of the great mini prints. Celebrate that special Alabama fan in your life. Call, you'll actually talk to me. 205-800-8000. I've got this. No representations made that the quality of legal services to be performed is greater than the quality legal services performed by other lawyers. The Pharmacy at Midtown with T.J. Thomas, 205-752-0627, pharmacymidtown.com. Don't forget about the retail side of the Pharmacy at Midtown. It's an independent-owned pharmacy specializing in walk-in prescriptions, medicine on time, packaging. Code BETTER for 15% off your first purchase. Love it or return it for free. That's L-U-M-E deodorant.com. Code BETTER to save. <laughs> about his philosophy when you look at the fourth down side of things and you look back at uh you know UW and you kind of study him and you say well where, where does he go on fourth down does he take some chances yeah he does he does uh but he also said that uh from his perspective he really doesn't feel like that he is above the average listen to him explain it's not just about fourth down I mean he gets kind of into his schematics he talks about maybe a little bit of his philosophy it's more than just fourth down listen to it closely I think there's a couple of things that we could take away from that yeah, this is something that, you know, I talked about with the team. We did this uh, before the first scrimmage because we talk about being in those moments and those fourth down situations on both sides of the ball. Um, you know, and just what, what that means when we are going for it. So I think it means that you have confidence that you can get it offensively, but it also means that you have confidence in a defense that can go out there and not, you know, not just, you know, collapse uh, if they're put in a tough spot where you come up short on the offensive fourth down conversion. So uh, we, we specifically talk about that. We get in situations and scrimmages and move the ball um, situations all camp long, uh, all spring long too, where we are very intentional on understanding when it comes to fourth down, it's just another play, it's another down. Yeah, it's an important one, um, but we can't just lock up and realize it's feel like it's do or die um, and go out there and just execute the play, just do what we're supposed to. I think when it comes to the decision, um, you know, I would say that the mindset is we want to be aggressive, but we're not going to be reckless. And that's what I tell the guys. That's what I tell the team. Uh, we're going to play a team game. Uh, and team game, you know, means that if there's situations we really feel are favorable, situations where uh, we, we feel like we can get it or that we really need to based on the, the flow of the game even, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll go for it. So, yeah, there's – I think – Last year, there were some right at the end of the season. Um, but if you look at the numbers, it isn't like we're that much more. I'd probably say we're in the middle of the pack, roughly, on how many times we go for it other than the championship game when you're forced to go for it. Uh, so, you know, I don't, I don't think, like, we're reckless, but we take those right times and uh, try to take advantage of them and go for it. Uh, if you look at their stats uh, in the fourth quarter, whether you go to 2022, uh, Washington was around the mid 40s, actually about 42nd. If you go to 2023, they were a little bit higher, uh, but also the conversion rate. Uh, they had a conversion rate. They went for it 22 times in 15 games. So you got to kind of skew that in your mind. They played more games than the average, where you got 22 games. Uh, they went for it 14 times. So, uh, excuse me, they went through it 22 times and they made 14 of the 22. I think that's a pretty good percentage. If you're doing a, a percentile, it's 63.96. Uh, is that what it is? 63.64, 63% of the time. So we'd probably round that up to 64 uh, when you when you look at it. So, uh, okay, that's a pretty solid percentile 
Uh, when you look at it, Tay of going, going for it on fourth down, as many times as they take it, they're not number one by no means. Uh, if you say, well, hey, where was Alabama at last year? You know, Nick Saban was kind of more of a conservative coach. Plus, you've got, and I don't know a lot about their punter, but uh, Nick Saban was a little bit higher. So maybe Kaylin Abor is correct. Uh, but they only went for it seven times. But their conversion rate, Nick Saban was 71%. So only going for it seven times. They did make five out of the seven, but 71 percentile. But uh, when you look at attempts, Alabama dropped significantly down. I think, uh, what are they down to? They're down to the hundreds. Uh, no, actually, here it is. Alabama's 133. 133 out of 133. So Alabama's dead last in the number of fourth down attempts. So we were not a very risky offense. But as he said, I don't want to be risky, but I don't, I don't want to be reckless either. So, uh, you know, I'm going to take some chances. And I think he will. Uh, Paul and Lincoln, hey, if you score on first down, you ain't got to worry about it, right? Uh, oh, me. I was in the transition. Uh, Paul, uh, continue, my friend. Uh, good afternoon. You're in the game. Ryan, it sounds like you were in the transition. I was. I was. I got a break sign. I got a stop sign. It was like, uh, don't go for it, go for it, go for it. Uh, I think we're, we're going to call a timeout. But you, you continue. We'll get to break after you. Uh, Ryan, the rec tech is on the way. It is on the way. The rec tech is on the way. Okay. It will, uh, it will be delivered tomorrow around 11 a.m. Okay. So, okay. Now, I will, looking forward to it. Okay. Are you going to baptize that rec tech in what? Uh, I mean, this is the grand prize winner. I mean, you, you got a you got a first uh, menu item that you're going to throw on the old rec tech grill. Well, Ryan, the recommendation by rec tech, uh, the company is to uh Chris and the grill they recommend a fatty a fatty meat okay something like a boston butt or yeah. a beef brisket somewhere along a little season uh, those, uh, a little season the grill a little bit okay exactly but, so so now are uh, you a professional on this like are well, you I'm, uh, I'm a i'm a terrible cook Okay. But I can grill with the best of them. Okay. If that makes any sense. Okay. Well, and Does that it, make any sense at yeah, all? Yeah. No. 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 I mean, I no. But 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 it's see, I'm I'm not very good inside the kitchen, but I'm okay on the grill. But the rec tech makes me look a lot better than I really am. Well, I've heard you mention that uh, before. That uh, you know the rec tech can can cover up a lot of uh, maybe cookie miscues, so to speak. Yes, so. it, it'll make you look... And and here's the issue that I have, okay, is my wife loves medium well on a steak. I'm more of a medium to medium rare, okay? I like a, I like a, lot, of, a lot of pink on my ribeye, okay? That's... Um, if you've got one of those, I'm not sure. Now, if your wife's the same, then it's probably a little bit easier, but you could put those temp probes in, and, Paul, it's going to make you look brilliant. I mean, you're going to be like... I mean, it, it's it, like cooking a brisket, uh, cooking a Boston butt, cooking a pork chop, chicken, cooking chicken. I mean, you get the exact temp. There is no, uh, let me go back and uh, cook it a little bit more. Um, no, Rec Tech's going to, it's going to do an awesome job. Well, like I said, looking forward to it. Ryan, uh, talking season is just about over, my friend. It is, single uh, digits. It's, uh, you know, you mentioned... We're nine days, nine days out from Bama versus the Hilltoppers. And when I think of number nine, I think of Bryce Young. I think of third down and 10, 97 yards away from the end zone in Lee County, late in the ball game in 2021. And what what a drive. When the money was on the line, Brian, Bryce Young delivered. Let's be honest, that was probably the wor one of the worst Auburn football teams collectively that I've ever seen in my life. They were horrible. Yet, they, they had us down 10-3 to 3 with uh, less than a minute to go in the game. And... Thank you, Bryce Young, for taking this 97, hitting Ja'Cory Brooks um, in the end zone to tie the game and then uh, go into quadruple overtime 
and uh, got to see John Mechie with the crane in the end as we as we uh, take down the Auburn books. Uh, that uh, whenever I think of Bryce Young, that's the that's the first memory that pops into my mind. I can't think of anything because. There's so many situations where you could, you know, look back at last year. You could go back to the gear that we played down there, and you know, Bryce Young, as you said. Um, I mean, we were we were in a situation, man. You lose that, oh my lord, oh my, oh my. We, right, we were graveyard dead. I mean, one of the worst Auburn football teams in the history of football, and we're down a touchdown with less than a minute to go and 97 yards. From pay dirt. I mean, we've got to score. We got to go ninety-seven just to tie it to get to overtime. I mean, my gosh. So, um, thank you, Bryce Young, and I'll say this: thank you, Jacory Brooks. I mean, I know he um, his career in Alabama didn't kind of pan out like we thought it would be, but uh, I'll forever be indebted to number seven for catching that pass uh, to 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 tie that football game up. so, um, But I'm looking forward to this season now, Ryan. Believe me. Uh, like I said, the talking season's over. You still got the doubters out there. I, I heard you say that Ralph Russo didn't didn't have Alabama in, uh, the, 12th in the same. <laughs> in the 12th team. And Dan Mullen, listen, I have no problem with people's opinions. I really don't. And In fact, I, I, I welcome uh, opinions. But uh, Dan Mullen, what, what is – I just don't understand his logic or his logic for having Alabama six, number six, six in the in SEC. The I, I just I just don't – I just don't get it. Uh, get it. I just – I mean, does he have some deep-seated uh, hatred or, or for, for Alabama? I mean, did we – did I did we did we beat him too many times, Ryan, at Mississippi State and at uh, at Florida? Well, I you, don't know. You, you can always backtrack it to Alabama fatigue. It's kind of like Chuck Martin. He was a part of that 2012 Notre Dame. And matter of fact, I'm going to play some of the audio clip uh, from Manti Teo. I'm sure that resurfaced over the weekend, uh, talking about how Notre Dame was just scared to death when they saw Alabama's team. So we'll dive into that. But, Chuck Martin was a part of that 2012 Notre Dame team. He got spanked down in Miami Gardens, uh, never really got off the bus. So, uh, you know, you can always tie it back to Alabama fatigue. Right, right. Um, but I tell you, uh, listening to – and listen, Ryan, I always preface this. We have not played game one yet. We have but th- these – the excitement that you hear from these coaches and their voices and their dispositions. I mean, Kane Womack, I mean, uh, he, uh, he, he, he gets me fired up to, talking about the defense, but you know, I know there's still a number of questions out there, uh, certainly in the secondary, but, uh, you know, he makes me think that, you know, maybe, maybe just maybe we'll be okay on that side of the ball, you know? And, uh, you know, the offense, uh, I feel, is going to speak for itself. I do. Uh, I do the as talent well. that, you know, the talent that Coach DeBoer and his staff has inherited, it, it's, this, will cert- this will be by far, <coughs> excuse me, this will be by far the best collection of talent that any of them coaches that came with him uh, from Washington, any of them, even Kane Womack came from US, uh, USA. It'll be the best collection count that they've ever it seen assembled on, on one field. Hey, so, real, real quick, uh, who's going to lead this team in uh, sacks? I'm going to say Q Robinson. Uh, I'm just throwing a name out there. I mean, he's waited his turn. Uh, you know, he's he's been here. I think this is his fifth year. Uh, he's he's paid his dues, and hopefully, um, he'll uh, <clears throat> he'll get some some reward. Right. What's the for number? Sticking it out. Um, I'm going to say, I'm going to say eight sacks. Okay. Hey, Paul, uh, real quick, and you got to you got to do this super super quick. But this uh, Auburn guy has responded to us on Twitter and said uh, we we were talking about Bryce Young, and I put up a video clip, and he said this was the idiot's Heisman moment. Hold 
uh, in the end zone and two missed intentional groundings. He must be proud of something he didn't earn. Um, you never underestimate the bugs, man. No, tell him to go to hell. All right, you just did. Paul, thank you so much. <laughs> roll Tide and roll MAGA. <laughs> we'll continue with more of the game. T-Town Tide, 100.9, 1230 WTBC, your home of Alabama Crimson Tide Sports. For over five years in our community, in downtown Northport, under that Roll Tide Bridge, Mark's Mark, the home of the chicken swirl. You'll find that since 1978 in Selma, Alabama, for over five years in downtown Northport. If you want to dominate the grill today or any day, find Mark's Mark. A great stop by on your way home if you're preparing for dinner. They've got a lot of those gourmet dishes that you can find, the great casseroles, the dips, the appetizers, the great steaks, the pork chops, the burgers, and all the supplies you need to dominate the grill. Experience the wow fact. Contact Shoot Masonry and Specialties at 205-887-3807 today and unleash your home's full potential. The game is powered by Tuscaloosa Toyota, TuscaloosaToyota.com. David DeSantis, the largest selection of new Toyotas in over three years can be found on Skyland Boulevard, 3325 Scotland Boulevard. Also a nice inventory of pre-owned inventory. You can find the new Tundra, the 2024, the Tacoma two-wheel drive, four-wheel drive. How about a new Fort Runner, Highlander, RAV4, Camry, Corolla, for those outside of Tuscaloosa, savings up to $1,500 off select appliances at the Home Depot. How doers get more done. Pricing valid August 22nd through September 11th. U.S. only see store online for details. Dos Amigos, Highway 69 in the New Public Shopping Center. 11 a.m. opening, 10 p.m. Friday and Saturday closing at 9, Sunday through Thursday. Some great Mexican cuisine, the great fajitas, the great desserts, the great lunch specials. You'll find it at Dos Amigos in the Public Shopping Center on Highway 69. Takeout orders. And these changes within just a couple of days. Text support to 511-511. These statements have not been evaluated by the FDA. This product is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Text fees may apply. Tuscaloosa Custom Curbing. Call Paul at 205-331-6823. Custom Curbing for your home or business. Do away with those plastic individual stone borders. Go for that more permanent decorative concrete border. No more grass growing between those individual stones. Cleaner to edge to maintain. It is they're willing to travel, not just here in Tuscaloosa, but also in our neighboring states as well over in Mississippi. Many colors and choices. They'll customize for that individual taste and house. Give them a call at 205-331-6823. You could also go to their Facebook account. Find their page. You can see exactly what the videos. They came out, did a free quote. Paul gave me an evaluation. Give them a call, 205-331-6823. Free quotes and evaluation. It is Tuscaloosa Custom Curbing. Tuscaloosa Custom Curbing. Call Paul at 205-331-6823. The longest-running sports show in Tuscaloosa. The game with Ryan Fowler. On your home for Alabama sports. Tide 100.9. And streaming on the Tide 100.9. App. You know, a lot of things to talk about. Let me invite you to Nuke Seedery, 205 University Boulevard, 205 758 2455. Close enough that you can smell the championships. The Nuke's Q sandwich, which is the number one sandwich across the franchise, the pimento cheese, the chicken salad, the French dip sandwich, the club. You know what's better than the club? The double club. Uh, 205 University Boulevard, 205-758-2455. Salads, California-style pizzas, but a great atmosphere. Lunch and dinner options, catering from a group of five to 500. Stephen, Raleigh, North Carolina, two minutes away. We're going to get to you, Brad Powers, in one hour. Right here on the game, T-Town, Todd, 100.9, 1230, WTBC, your home of Alabama Crimson Tide Sports. Deal or text deal to 511-511. Text deal to 511-511 today. All dogs are unique. Your dog results can and will vary. Message and data rates may apply. Alabama Credit Union with the official countdown to Alabama Crimson Tide football right here on the game. AlabamaCU.com. The mobile app saves a lot of time. The mobile deposits, checking, savings, mortgage, home equity loan, 
financing a vehicle, the great competitive rates, Alabama. 511 511. Text Muscle to 511 511 today. All individuals are unique. Your results can and will vary. These statements have not been evaluated by the FDA. This product is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Text fees may apply. WTBC Tuscaloosa and W265CG Tuscaloosa, a town square media station. Tide 100.9 and streaming on the Tide 100.9 app. From the Fox Sports Studios in Los Angeles. Here's Dan Beyer. The Seattle Mariners are firing manager Scott Service after almost nine seasons. Dan Wilson is expected to take over for the M's for the rest of the year as Seattle is coming off of a road trip where they went 1-8 and eight and were swept by the Tigers and Dodgers. The Dodgers have designated veteran Jason Hayward for assignment, while Angels GM Perry Manassian will return next season after agreeing to a contract extension. Aaron Judge has hit home run number 48, and John Carlos Stanton's hit a three-run shot. Yankees lead the Guardians 5-0 in the eighth inning. The Nationals lead the Rockies 8-1 in the ninth, while the Brewers and Cardinals are scoreless in the fifth. Cubs up 6-0 on the Tigers in the fifth inning. Falcons have made corner A.J. Terrell the second highest paid corner in the NFL. He agreed on a four-year deal worth $81 million, while the Eagles acquired wide receiver Jahan Dotson in a trade with the Commanders. Dotson plus a fifth-round pick are going to Philly, with the Commanders getting a third-round pick plus two seventh-round picks. Tide 100.9, Tuscaloosa weather. A partly sunny sky this afternoon, the chance of a few isolated showers through the evening hours. The high today, 89, the low tonight, 68. Then for tomorrow and Saturday, the sky's sunny both days. Afternoon highs very close to 90 degrees. I'm James Spann on the ABC 3340 Weather Center on Tide 100.9. to go. I remind you that we're always powered by Tuscaloosa Toyota. Tuscaloosa Toyota.com. The pre-owned inventory. Check out all of that inventory including those new Toyotas for just a few more days on the national sales event. The 2024 Corolla 3.99 APR for 36 on the Tuscaloosa Toyota.com website. The 2024 Highlander we have a leasing special with a thousand one thousand dollar loyalty cash back. The 2024 RAV4 3.99 APR for 36 if you're looking for the Camry. The 20 25 Camrys. They have arrived at Tuscaloosa Toyota. 3.99 APR for 36. The Tundra, the 2024 Tundra, the 2025s are not out yet. 1.99 APR for 36 plus a $2,000 loyalty cash. Let's go back real quick. We're nine days away from Alabama Credit Union. Over the weekend, there was a comment that came out from Manti Teo. I can, I'll, I can remember being on the sidelines. I remember, and I, I can even tell you the people I, were, I was around. I was around Reese Davis. I was around Travis Ryer. I was around Brent Beard. Chase Goodbread may have been there because Travis and, and Chase are, are best buddies. Uh, we were there on the sidelines. I'm, I'm trying to remember. I don't, I don't remember Chase, but I'm, I'm sure he was there. I know Travis responded when I put that up. Uh, I remember looking out there, and I went, there's no way that that team right there is going to beat the University of Alabama. Size difference. Now, I didn't see anything about Manti Teo's comments until this past weekend. I didn't even know that he had revealed this, uh, but he was doing an interview, and he, he talked about this Alabama 2012 game. Remember the game? Notre Dame came in number one. Notre Dame, hey, they're the Irish. They have reestablished. And all week we were there hanging out with the Irish media, and I did not realize that they had created the game of the, you know, the pigskin, the, the football, but they did. Without them, there would be no football. And if you don't believe me, just ask them. They've not been relevant, relevant since really that game, and even Alabama, they got them a couple of years ago. But uh, it's, they haven't won a national title since 1987. But Manti Teo talked about Alabama, and I even saw people that were personnel people, uh, like Doug Simpson, uh, inside the football building, talk about, hey, you know, we, we, were, we were locking the, the door because Nick Saban was not – uh, and, and Notre Dame was the number one team, so they came out last. Right, Alabama would come out first. 
Nick Saban, Alabama, Notre Dame would have been the, the last team out, and they couldn't get Alabama to come out of the locker room. And Notre Dame was in the tunnel. There was one tunnel coming out of uh, Miami Gardens, Hard Rock Stadium. And Manti Teo described it. Listen to the, what he said, uh, and it's, it's, it's kind of given us a little insight into this Notre Dame-Alabama game. I think we could even tie it back to Chuck Martin, which was a part of that staff at Notre Dame uh, there with Alabama against uh, when they beat them down in Miami Gardens. This is how... Manti Teo described uh, this moment. Do remember this. We are playing at the Hard Rock Cafe Stadium, Miami Dolphins Stadium. For people that don't know anything about that stadium, there's only one tunnel. So both teams come out of the tunnel. We were the number one ranked team in the country that year, so we're the home team. Mm -hmm. We came out of our locker room first. Mm -hmm. Alabama hadn't come out of their locker room yet. So everybody stopped us at the tunnel and said, hey, you have to wait. You have to wait until Alabama, Alabama comes out. Wow. So I'm one of the captains. I'm in front of all my guys. Alabama hasn't come out yet. My guys are hyped. They're getting, they're loud. They're doing their thing, right? And I have a, when I'm in game day mode, I, I see things, but I don't. I'm, I'm kind of just in my own little zone. Alabama's locker room door opens and they start running out, right? And they're going out. And I do remember this very vividly. My soon-to-be teammate, DJ Fluker, and Chance Warmack come running out of the, the locker room with their jerseys. Tucked. Tucked underneath. No, it's up. Oh, their oh, big oh. bellies are out. Oh. And they have their fours up. And I remember DJ going by and saying, womp, 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 womp. And I remember vividly remembering the silence behind me. <laughs> and I kind of glanced back at my teammates and the eyes on them were so large, I knew at that time, I was like, all right, this is gonna be a long day. Oh no. <laughs> to my guys' credit, they never flinched, but let me tell you guys, when, when we played the Alabama team in 2013, there was a difference. There was a difference with those Bama boys. And Tateo, and you saw like AJ McCarron coming out with, with this responding. I know I saw multiple guys just just talking about that game, that atmosphere, the size difference between Alabama and, at that point, the number one team in the country. Uh, but this Alabama team was just built different. I mean, it, it was a different, but I know that, uh, you know, A.J. had a respectful thing to say. He said, um, you know, that that is, um, you know, you look back at that comment, the way that he described it, it looks like a lot of respect for Manti Teo. But that Notre Dame team, Alabama was, man. They they intimidated you. They they put the fear in you anytime they walked out on that football field. So, um, you know, and I say other linebackers putting that in, but man, what a game. What a game. So we can go back to butt hurt from Chuck Martin. And little did I know that I'd be talking about an individual that was on that coaching staff. So anytime he sees that script day, he gets like uh, you know, a, a oh I mean, you know, my heart flutters a little bit. Uh Jackson, what do you think? Well, uh, I was going to ask, do you think uh, Notre Dame's eyes would have been that wide if uh, the tide wasn't in that game and the dogs? In 2012? After that SEC game? I think, listen, I often say that Alabama would have won the national title. They did win the national title. I think Georgia would have won the national title too. I think it, Notre Dame had been propped up simply because we always prop up Notre Dame. We prop them up whether we're talking about All-Americans or preseason awards. And I think a lot of that is uh, due to many people affiliated with the Catholic Church. I think the, the bias towards that, uh, I think it's also, I mean, think about the College Football Hall of Fame. It used to be in South Bend, Indiana. We moved it to Atlanta, Georgia. But there was a huge discrepancy because of the number of players that they, and I'm not taking anything away from Notre Dame, but it's been a long time since they've really been uh, at the top. Uh, Alabama went past them. Uh, with 13 national titles way, way, way long ago. But Notre Dame is still at second place. But uh, from a historical perspective, they've, they've drifted away. I mean, they still have a rich tradition, but, you know, will they ever be able to get back to where they're kicking butt and taking names? I mean, you saw it, Brian Kelly, who left Notre Dame to go to LSU. I mean, LSU is a good school. I, I don't put it at the top of the SEC by no means. But, I mean, they chose to leave Notre Dame and go to LSU and I think a lot of that is simply because it's the talent. It's a talent in that state. Brian Kelly thought he couldn't get over that hump in South Bend, and he could in Baton Rouge. And uh, only time will tell. Let's go to Stephen in Raleigh, North Carolina. Stephen, good afternoon. You're in the game. I hope all is well. All is well, Ryan. How are you today? You know, I'm just thinking about that Notre Dame game, Alabama. That may have been one of my favorite college football games to cover. 
I mean, because you knew after was, the first quarter it was over. I mean, you could just relax, go get you a hot dog, bag of popcorn. It was over. I mean, it, you know, from Eddie Lacy's first touchdown until the final one, it, it would it, no chance. It, you knew it was over when both those teams were on the field, Ryan. Um, there was just a difference in the Alabama players and the Notre Dame players. And the Notre Dame players were <laughs> they were so disheartened when they saw they actually saw what they were up against. I mean, the coach said it right at halftime. What? How did they win that game? Well, Alabama doesn't. Can't, Alabama can't run back out on that field, you know. So, uh, it was a fun time. You think that was twenty twelve? Correct, Ryan? Yeah, it was. It was twenty. It was actually calendar year would have been twenty thirteen, but it was a twenty twelve season. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, you always kind of they call it the two thousand thirteen well, yeah. BCS national championship game, but. You know, the, even the Barrett Jones, A.J. McCarron final two minutes and, you know, Kobe Bryant's tweet saying that's why Alabama's fixing to beat Notre Dame 42-14. to 14. I mean, Kobe Bryant looked and said, you know, here it is, the last couple of minutes, and these guys are getting in a, a discussion, a pushing match because one of them wanted to do this block. And it, it, we've asked Barrett and A.J. about this, and it was simply just identifying the Mike linebacker. It was the center identifies the Mike. The quarterback sometimes do it, uh, does it as well, but they had a discussion, and the discussion was, no, no, that's the mic. No, and everything's blocked off of the mic. You point out the mic, and then you move. Uh, you know, everybody else has their positions assignment based on that, and that was the discussion. But, And you saw Nick Saban out there exploding, but that's the way those guys were built. You know, Ryan, we just... And they were uh, best friends, by the way. I mean, St- Stephen, I mean, Barrett and, and A.J. room together on the road. I mean, they were close uh, right, right, right. Yes, they were intense. So yes, but they, they they were they were just competitors. Yeah, sure, yeah. sure. Right. I mean, they wanted to score probably another touchdown. <laughs> you know, I realize. You know, you talk about AJ McCarron, and I realized we had we had Tua, and I realized we had uh, a lot of good quarterbacks. But AJ McCarron is probably my favorite dude when it comes. He the guy was a leader. He he did everything well, and he was just a leader. Uh, you know, you remember when uh, Coach Saban, like, smacked him on the butt or spanked him or something. <laughs> remember how big a deal that was. But that guy was, he was a leader. And that was Brian. after a touchdown. And, I mean, think about it in the, not, in the time that we live in now, that was – I'm trying to think if that was 2011 or 2012. Uh, that the you I know, think it was his first year. Okay, I think so that would have been old, it would have been 2011. Um, well, yeah, yeah. And and AJ shared so. that story about he, it's actual a touchdown. And so I, I mean, see, I'm going to see if I can paraphrase. But AJ was on the kickoff. Excuse me, on the uh, place kicker. He was the holder, right, for the kick, uh, the place, you know, the field goal, the point after touchdown. Right, and right, he, right, right. He checks out. He said he looks over, and, and, and they're trying to take the air out of the game. And Alabama's, I think it's Mississippi State, and he looks over and he sees a wide receiver. There's nobody covering this guy. I mean, nobody covering. He said, there, he said this wide receiver's over by himself. And so he said he doesn't want to point out to the wide receiver, hey, man, I see you. But he said he did something. He rubbed, it on his, you know, rubbed his leg just to say, I, I see you over there. We're, we're going away from a running play, and I'm fixing to check out of this. I'm going to throw a football. And he checked out of a running play where Nick Saban was trying to take the air out of the ball and, and, and drain the clock and threw a touchdown, all right? He threw a touchdown. Well, then Nick Saban would love to get to him, but he couldn't get to him because he's the point-after touchdown holder on the field goal. He's still out on the field. So it gave Nick Saban two more minutes just to get hotter and hotter and hotter. And if you go back and watch that play, he met A.J. out on the middle of the field. And uh, the story <laughs> continues. You know, you know, Ryan, the next year when we, we lost to Auburn in the kick six, did we not play Kirk Cousins in the bowl game in Michigan State, maybe? I think we did. You yeah. know, I think back to that game, we've been pretty good. If yeah, I we did. Yeah, we did. Yeah. I mean, we beat um, Michigan State, you know, in 2015 out in the Cotton Bowl. We, we, you know, the, the, I look. I, well, I look back and I and I see Kirk Cousins' career in the NFL, and I see AJ, and I think about oppor- Kirk Cousins. He went to Washington. He went to the Redskins and got an opportunity. And AJ, 
uh, set behind, uh, I don't even remember, Cincinnati quarterback who's no longer a starter. Andy Dalton. I can't Andy, Dalton. Andy Dalton. And just kind of rotted away and was was picked later. I, you know, sometimes the NFL is, is a land of opportunity. And if you don't get the opportunity, you're passed by because the next draft class comes along and you're no longer the next greatest thing. But when I look at Kirk Cousins and I look at A.J. McCarron in college, there was nothing in college that said Kirk Cousins was better than A.J. McCarron. It's so it, it just so small fragment that separates success and not getting, you know, that big contract. Um, that big contract, right. So, uh, yeah, I, I think about that sometimes. Those good times, though, we went, won three out of four national championships. And really, really, I was at that kick six game. It, Ryan, Ryan, I was sitting in the corner end zone. Um, I, don't know, I don't know the Auburn Stadium to know which corner I was in, but – it was the uh, well. Here's the way. Here's the way you describe. Toward. Here's the way you describe the the dump. That's uh, Jordan. Okay. J-O- tell me how. Tell me how you J o r d a n. Were you in the 1940 scoreboard side or the new video uh, <laughs> side? That's the way you describe it. I mean, what corner were were you looking over the you know the Rena Center giant screen TV or were you one in the 1940s on the other end? Because it's like I, rusted I think breaking the Center TV. Okay. I think the Renner Center TV was in the other end zone. Okay, so, so. You, yeah, you were in that. You were, you're, yeah. I mean, it looks like somebody that you know went out and like the stadium is not that nice. But you walk in, no, it's, it's like a, it's a junk of a house. But then they've got the eighty inch TV up here. So yeah, it's beautiful. You know, I I think about that season and and I was in that game. I'm sitting in, sitting there in the stadium, Ryan, and at no moment. Was I ever afraid of losing? No, my, I it never crossed my mind that we were going to lose that game. Now we were we were they playing us closer than I thought they should have? Yes. And then when that play that play happened in the stadium, the the kick six part of it, Ryan, it happened in slow motion. I turned to my friend who's. I turned to my friend and said. Is that really happening? And I had time to say that. He's like, yep. And we, I have never gotten out of Auburn faster in my life because all the fans are on the field. And him and I high-stepped it all the way to our car and drove to Birmingham in like trafficless, it was no traffic all the way to Birmingham because all the people and all the Auburn fans are on the field. But, it, you know, Right, Ryan, we should have won three in a row there. That team I should have. was going to win the national championship. Heck, I mean, and, and I'll never forget asking Coach Saban about these championships. And probably the maddest I've ever got, there was two situations where I got Coach Saban mad. I mean, one time I'm not going to share on the air, but number two is when I ask him about, Coach, will you just spend 30 seconds reflecting on what you've been able to accomplish? I mean, at that point it was five or six national yeah, titles. Yeah. He barked at me. How about the teams that didn't win a national title? Oh, coach, I'm I'm sorry, I, I didn't didn't want to know about those. I wanted to know about the, you know, the six national titles. Uh, you know, and but 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 it, it's the losses. I mean, because he looks back and goes, you know, we, I know he's had some comments about Lane Kiffin in the last 24 hours. He's got to beat himself up. He's got to think, you know what? I put up with Lane Kiffin for three years. Why could I not put up with him for six more days? Because Alabama would have won a national title. Probably so. They would have. They would have won I, a national title, and and but it's it's those little moments. Uh, 2013, you mentioned. It. Yeah, so close. You know, uh, Ryan, we we get back to this team. Um, you talk about uh, Kalen DeBoer going for it fourth down, and 22 times I think you said last year. Yeah, 22 times. How many times did Alabama go for it? Seven. Going for it then. Seven. Seven. What was our – we hit it three or four times. Well, we hit five we out of seven. We were uh, 64 five percent. Uh, but if you want to look at it, nobody in college football, no one, no team in college football went for it fewer times on fourth down than Nick Saban at the University of Alabama. We were dead so it, last. In other words, we didn't take chances. We didn't want to take chances. You know – it's going to be a new thing for us. 
It will be. It will be. But it's probably going to be over dramatized because we are so used to not going, well, being the lowest amount of times in all of college football. This is a normal thing for other college football teams to do, is to go for it 15, 16, 17, 20 times a, a year, and we're down there at seven. So probably when it happens, Ryan, it's going to be a bigger deal made out of it than really what it, what it should be. Yeah, I think, yeah, probably, pr- probably. But I, I've been saying that when I look back and I watch a lot of his tape throughout uh, the, the offseason, he does take some gambles. Right. I mean, even though he says he's in the average, uh, I'd love to go back and look at the metric of where they went for it because the one that I, when he went for it at 30, uh, the only thing I could think about is doing sports talk radio in Tuscaloosa. If you went for it on your own 30 yard line, early in the game and it not working it worked and so nobody questioned it but if it would have not worked you'd be like oh my heavens what a what a i mean what a gamble and uh, maybe there's a situation there but hey steven i appreciate you man as always roll time yes right, sir roll time right back to you let me remind you about the wharf if you're looking for a new pair of jeans you'll find wrangler levi lee if you're looking for carhartt clothing rocky clothing under armor clothing you'll find that if you're looking for justin tony lama red wing georgia double h timberline laredo and many more 60 different brands of boots, all the name brands that you have come to trust over the years. The work in Western headquarters since 1976. It is the wharf. You'll find it on McFarland Boulevard. If you're traveling westbound, you pass by the old Winn-Dixie Shopping Center that's out of business now. Uh, El Gran is right there on the right-hand side of the road. The next shopping center is the wharf on the right-hand side of the road. If you've passed by the blue plate, you've went too far. Go see our friends, Mark and Lee. It is the wharf, and they're always listening to the show. So hello, Mark and Lee. Hope you guys are having a great day. Go over and see the war for all the work in Western wear for the entire family. We'll come back. Josh and Georgia, you're on deck. Kaylin DeBoer Audio, we got to go back to a couple of other things because he said a lot in a 23-minute press conference. There's a lot of meat and potatoes there. We're going to talk about it. Coming up next, T-Town Tide, 100.9-1230 WTBC, your home of Alabama Crimson Tide Sports. West Alabama real-time news update from the Tuscaloosa Thread Newsroom. Police are investigating after an unidentified body was discovered decomposing behind a shopping center in Northport Wednesday. Mayor Walt Maddox has given his 2025 budget recommendations to the city council. They include higher water bills, raises for all city employees, and the creation of an unprecedented drone first response team. Finally, the demolition of the downtown Tuscaloosa News Building is likely to begin in October to make way for the Saban Center. For the details on these stories and more, get connected. Customers, and we thank you for trusting our team to get you the right part for the past 39 years. North Port Auto Supply. Why? Go anywhere else. Rumsey Environmental, a one-stop shop serving West Alabama for all of your waste removal needs. If you're in the construction business, take a little bit of stress out of your life. The construction debris removal containers customized to fit your job site. The portable toilet service. The storage containers to protect your valuables. It's Rumsey Environmental for that complete waste removal service. When you have better for 15% off your first purchase. Love it or return it for free. That's L-U-M-E deodorant.com code better to save 15% today. Tide 100.9 Tuscaloosa weather. A partly sunny sky this afternoon. The chance of a few isolated showers through the evening hours. The high today 89. The low tonight 68. Then for tomorrow and Saturday the sky's sunny both days. Afternoon highs very close to 90 degrees. I'm James Spann on the ABC 3340 Weather Center on Tide 100. 100.9. Follow the Crimson Tide on their journey to another national championship. Touchdown, Alabama! On your home for Alabama sports, Tide 100.9. And streaming on the Tide 100.9 app. Calusa tweets at us. Actually, doesn't tweet. Sends us a message on the app. You can do that with us. And we always appreciate uh, you guys dialing in 
uh, when the app, you open up the app, you do the drop down menu, it says uh, you can send us a message, you can do a voicemail, you can send us a photo. Uh, we enjoy interacting there. Salty in Tuscaloosa says you guys have, you may have talked about this, but since the team chose captains before the season, uh, will the captains wear the number C on the jerseys this year? Salty, I don't know. I, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know. I know K1 board was asked about that. Uh, and we'll play that audio in the next segment talking about captains. Uh, and it will also play one other audio. Uh, Jax, let me hold that over. Let me take uh, Jax, uh, Josh right here, and then I'll do the K1 DeBoer audio uh, with him talking about quarterback whisper because he he is, in our opinion. Uh, and we'll see how Jalen Milrow takes that big step in this offense. But let's go to Josh in Georgia. Josh, good afternoon. You're in the game. Good afternoon, Ryan. How is everything, buddy? I'm good. I'm good. But um, I was looking here. I'm, real quick, I was looking here. Um, Make sure I've got this. I've got my, I've got my caller list right here, and uh-huh. I think I've got something for you. Um, let me see if I've got uh-huh. this correct. Happy birthday to you! Happy birthday to you! Happy birthday, dear Josh in Georgia! Happy birthday to you! Thank you very much. Today now, is my birthday. Yeah, you're a, you're a preacher, so you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. I can't sing a lick, but I make a joyful noise. Right. Hey, that's that's what the word says. <laughs> make a joyful noise. Yeah, and that's so, about all it is. And I'm not sure if it's even joyful. So, hey, as long as you enjoy doing it, you know, and <laughs> it makes you happy. Well, I'm trying to. Do it. I'm I'm trying to bring a do smile it. to your face. How bad of a singer you, you I am. Are, I'm awful. You are. I'm awful. I mean. I, I've been, uh, my phone's been lit up like a Christmas tree all day. Facebook messages, Instagram, uh, texts, calls, so voicemails. So, but it's been a good day so far. Even though I did have to work, I didn't take it off. I should have taken it off, but I didn't. Uh, I wanted to go be blue collar and just, you know, go do my job. And I did take off tomorrow and Monday, though, because my niece is one today. So I had a niece born on my birthday last year. So I'm going to go see her for the weekend, her and my sister and brother-in-law okay so okay they live out in north carolina about five hours away so i'll be driving tomorrow and i'm going the back way i ain't doing no interstate highway stuff i'm going up by the nanahala you talk about some pretty country that's pretty country and uh i don't know if you've ever got over that way i have much, I've, at all i've actually kayak uh that so, a little bit if i get up early enough i want to feel that cool because I don't know how it's been in West Alabama, but the last three mornings over here in North Georgia, the mornings have been a crisp 65, 67 degrees, and it's been beautiful whenever I leave for work, and I love it. But um, so get up, maybe try to hit that in the morning, just hear that river run and feel that cool mountain air. Oh, man, it's going to be just take a breath. It won't be as good as a breath as it is whenever I cross the Alabama state line, in particular the Tuscaloosa County state line and you just roll off of 2059 on the McFarland, it ain't going to be that good of a feeling, but it'll be pretty doggone close. Yeah, but it, it kind of gets so, you in the mindset of football, right? When you're down in the 60s, you, I let the dog oh, out dude. for the final time probably about 1130 last night and uh-huh. went out and I was like, whoa, whoa, I'm how about you, that? That's exactly what I thought. Yeah. That's, exa- thought. that's exactly what I thought two mornings ago right when I walked out, walked out on Monday morning, and I'm like, you could just smell football in the air just for that. But cool now weather. I don't want to disappoint. But uh, Monday it's going to be back in the mid nineties. Tuesday nineties. Yeah. Looking it's ahead to again. next weekend, Saturday's game, ninety one seventy with a forty eight percent chance of rain, according to my weather app. But we do have at what six o'clock kickoff, so it'll maybe be a little bit cooler. Oh, I would assume. Yeah, I would assume. Hopefully, so, in, I hope. And, and that's we'll, a good thing for the first three home games. Is they're all six six thirty games. Yeah, and I'm and I, looking. I love that. Yeah, looking. So. I mean, even after that little hot uh, couple of days, we'll be back in the colder weather. And it uh, looks like the C- the 60s are more common. Good, good. Maybe global warming has been fixed or at least. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. So I hear you're continuing what you was doing yesterday. We are. And, of course, I did not get to get in on yesterday about sack leaders. So you did tacklers, what, on Monday. So now you're doing sack leaders. So you're kind of like. It's not just a tackle. And this, I, I think Who's this will be the, the, yeah, the yeah. This will be the final defensive metric that we do. We we probably spent more time on the offense, but uh, we did. We really did because we did the quarterbacks, the running backs. We did. You pick your receiver. 
uh, and we really did because, I mean, that's who Kalen DeBoer is. He's an offensive guru. And, uh, but I really think the more I've heard about this defense, the more I've gotten excited. And as long as we can stay away from the injury bug, hopefully, and, you know, I'll be thankful if we do, I think we'll be okay. I think we got a shot to do something special and make a deep run here with a new head coach and a new system and scheme. And I think we'll surprise a lot of people. I really do. So. Uh, I think but, Raph um, Russo would be the number one guy, and Dan Mullen would be probably number one and number two. They don't even have Alabama in the playoffs. <laughs> and then I mean, I, Dan I, Mullen has Alabama six in the in the SEC. I, I know it, and that, I know it. Somebody, somebody, make sure his visor is not on too tight, <laughs> and uh, make sure you know he's breathing. Well, when you get okay. pounded by so, Alabama the way that Alabama so pounded many years, Mississippi State, so many years. you develop a little so fatigue. You do. I know it. Uh, I'll never forget, and I, this is just one memory. I gotta say it while I'm here. We played them. I can't remember though if it was at State or at Tuscaloosa, but that was their quarterback, Dak Prescott, who's your Dallas quarterback. Dak Prescott was their quarterback, and he decides to try to run around Big Jonathan Allen. Well, you know that didn't go well. Jonathan Allen set him down. So, but uh, I do remember many. Of course, Jonathan Allen was just a dude. I don't know if we got a dude like that this year, but. I will say I'm looking for big things. Um, and with that being said, I will, I'm will. i sticking firmly with, I know I've probably picked him in almost every defensive metric I have gotten in on. Okay. But I have got to stay with our defensive captain, in Deontay Lawson. All right, I so mean, you're going to go personally, Lawson? Yes. Personally, the expectations I have put on him as a dis- defensive captain is probably unfair to myself. Yeah. All right, give me the but number. I'm looking for big things. Give me the number. i got to get to this and, break. This is for every game we play, I look for 10. Okay, got it. I look for 10 total. Hey, Josh, I hope you enjoy your rest of your birthday, man. Thank you for yeah, being buddy, a part I of our show. I appreciate it. Yep. Roll Tide. Thank you, Josh. Georgia, Corey Trustville, get ready. We're coming to you. But I've got a couple of Kalen Borough audio clips that we'll go to, him talking about quarterbacks and also him talking about captains. We have two lines available, 205-342-9904. Nine days away, brought to you by Alabama Credit Union. We roll on next, T-Town Tide, 100.9-1230 WTBC, your home of Alabama Crimson Tide Sports. Go inside the Alabama Crimson Tide with the Gary Harris Show. Hey, everybody. It's Gary Harris coming up Friday morning at 9 a.m. It's the TGIF edition of the Gary Harris Show. And are we going to be cranking it out for you? The voice of the Crimson Tide, Chris Stewart, will join us for an Alabama football preview. Plus, Larry the Music Man and Brett Pritchard with the Auburn Report. And your phone calls as well. That's Friday morning at 9 a.m. on the Gary Harris Show. And you. Not available in every state. Subject to terms and conditions. Rating factors and savings vary. And in some states, your rate could increase with high-risk driving. Allstate Fire and Casualty Insurance Company and affiliates, Northbrook, Illinois. Don Wattis CPA, 527 Main Avenue in downtown Northport. Small business and personal income taxes, payroll, sales tax needs. They can also help you with nonprofit or church accounting or auditing in business since 1999. They work for you, not the IRS. When you take on taxes, you got to have someone on your side. It's Don Wattis CPA. Slash deal or text deal to 511-511. Your order is back with a 90-day guarantee. All dogs are unique. Your dog results can and will vary. Message and data rates may apply. The Game with Ryan Fowler. Powered by Tuscaloosa Toyota. On your home for Alabama sports. Tide 100.9. And streaming on the Tide 100.9 app. Trustville, before we get a K1 of Boer talking about quarterbacks. Uh, Corey, good afternoon. You're in the game. I hope all is well. Hey, Ryan. How are you doing this afternoon? Man, I'm good. I hope you are as well. Yeah, I'm doing great. You know, when I watched that national championship game, that was probably the most confident I've ever felt before, during a national championship. You're talking about the Notre Dame game? Yes. Yeah, I mean, Alabama was over a touchdown favorite of that game. 
Big. I mean, even be- even before they came on the field, I just felt so confident going into that game. I mean, yes, I respected what Notre Dame had coming into that game, but I just knew that Alabama was so much better. And, and then when when um, Ryan Kelly made those comments, you just knew the game was over. And and Alabama asserted their will and then some. But, but let me ask you this. Had okay. Alabama had won the Iron Bowl in 2013, do you really think Alabama would have beat James Winston? Yes. Or why? I just think Alabama would have been a better team. I mean, I think Alabama would have been rolling. I mean, I, I thought in a lot of ways, and, and we play like crap down in Lee County. We always have, and pro- I hope maybe that's one thing if we could wish for DeBoer, that he handles Lee County with a different focus, a different, uh, I mean, because, man, oh, man, we played like crap down there. I mean, my, my, my thing on no, I'll always never entertain is why do we not play for overtime? I mean, yes, still could have lost the game. But, but take your chances in overtime. I mean, you never know what could happen. I mean, we had the better team, but and I know people say, well, you could have covered the kick better, but I don't think Alabama was anticipating on him returning it. And, of course, our kicking game wasn't nearly the, wasn't the greatest at that time. But I just think – I just never understand why Saban never played for overtime because a 58-yard field goal is a long field goal in college. Yeah, and you almost wonder why he took that chance. And if you remember now, Adam Griffith, it was Adam Griffith, right? Yes. He was not the starting kicker. And, if, and I bet you didn't know this. On that play, A.J. McCarron was not the holder. I can't remember who the holder was, but A.J. McCarron was not the holder in, on that play. It was the, the punter. Cause Would that have been Cody had, Mandel? Yes. Yes, Cody Mandel was the holder on that play because on that play, Adam Griffith said, I want Cody Mandel to hold on this play. And then, of course, we know what happened. But um, And that I may have just been number- simply about the practice. Could have been. But- you know, because if AJ, I would assume, would have been the number one kicker holder. Probably didn't do a lot of holding for the number two guy. So well, maybe that's why. I- I'm, I'm just, I don't know. I'm just... When I, when I think of number nine, first thing that comes to mind is Amari Cooper. I mean, he was our first Bolitnikoff Award winner, I think. And just, he set records before Devon. I mean, he, I mean, he was the one that set records for Alabama that started the receiver dynasty part of the Nick Saban dynasty. And uh, he basically somewhat won us the the SEC championship game. And I know the defensive stand is what did it, but he put us in front and just had an amazing national championship. And he was one of the top receivers Alabama's ever had. I mean, probably number two behind Devontae Smith. I got you. I got you. Corey, what are you thinking about sacks-wise? Uh, who is going to lead well, this team in sacks? Well, I have a question. Do you know what the, the record for team sacks is for Alabama? I think it was Tosh Lapoy's first year here. We went from the 30s to the to the upper 50s. I'll, I'll have to go do back. Think, do, you, do you think that's possible we can break that under no. Kalen DeBoer? Well, I mean, not no. this year. Not this year. But at that 2016, I, I'm, I'm just literally going off memory. I think we, we had, it was either 52 or 58. Uh, I can tell you in two seconds. At 54. 54 in 2016, we led the country. I believe that was Tosh Lapoy's first year. But as far as facts, I'm going to go with um, I'm going to go with G.I. Campbell. But but another thing that I'm kind of interested in, somebody said, I can't remember if it was you, or somebody said that Malachi Moore is from where the green dot, meaning signaling something on the defense. Do you like that, or are we still going to have the Rolando McClain Reggie Ragland being the Mike linebacker that's the captain of the defense. I, marking out the I haven't heard a confirmation that Malachi Moore would be the you, – you get two of there? You get two on that side of the ball or just one? Well, well, somebody's wearing the communication in the helmet, but there's someone with a green dot on their helmet signifying something. But I guess it's – I thought the green Deontay. dot was the communication. Well, someone said Malachi Moore's wearing the green dot, but but Deontay Lawson's is supposed to be one with the communication in his helmet. But uh, I could be wrong telling you this, but Malachi Moore's playing a role of something on the secondary. Maybe he's the quarterback of the secondary or the 
supposed to be. But I always like it where you have your Mike linebacker being closest to the line of scrimmage. That way he can communicate to the front and back end of defense. Because I never like it. I never liked it when your secondary was leader in defense because it put so much stress back there. Because because to me, it's think it, it, it's just my opinion. It signifies you have a weakness in your defense when your secondary leader is the is the leader of your defense. I always liked it when your Mike linebacker was your leader of your defense. I got you, but I, I, I don't your, think you're. I, I Corey, I don't. I haven't heard. Uh, if Balakai is going to be that guy, but I'd be absolute shocked if Deontay Lawson was not the communication guy. Well, I think he's supposed to be. Um, well, I, don't, but, I just don't even know if it's a debate. Um, I mean, I, I mean well, if you'll tell me where you got the Malachi Moore stuff at, I mean, I've been to every media availability that we've had. I haven't heard it. I don't, uh, let me ask you this. Um, what, um, what, um, off, he, he was talking about going on fourth down. You know, he's saying not going reckless. So I guess that means we're not going Lane Kiffin style. We're just going just at the right time. I mean, because you know, you, you know, you talk about going forward on territory. You know, you don't want to, you don't want to throw away the game and not get it and give them a free possession. You know, you want to, you want to go for it. And you know, because you know, under saving, he would punt the ball, and sometimes I'd be like, you know, it's not that far. You can go for it. Yeah. Because. Well, but he was just—he was a very, very conservative uh, uh, coach. So, well, it's an offensive-driven, driven sport, and anytime you have a chance to extend a drive, I, I mean, I understand it's like fourth and four or fourth and five, but it's fourth and two or fourth and one or inches, and the way our offense is supposed to run, I wouldn't have a problem going for it on fourth down because if you can get that extra score on a drive, that, that it can make a difference. Absolutely. Hey, Corey, give me a number. You said Jihad Campbell is going to lead the team in sacks. Uh, what number? A 12. Got it. Corey, I hope you have a great rest of your day, man. Thank you so much. You too, Ron. Roll time. Right back to you. We'll continue with more. Brad Bowers, Pratt Powers coming up at 4 o'clock. He's a professional handicapper. He's going to join us every week. He's one of our regular guests. We're going to break down some odds. We'll talk about that next. T-Town Tide 100.9-1230 WTBC. You're home of Alabama Crimson Tide Sports. Slash deal or text deal to 511-511. Text deal to 511-511 today. All dogs are unique. Your dog results can and will vary. Message and data rates may apply. Tide 100.9, Tuscaloosa weather. A partly sunny sky this afternoon. The chance of a few isolated showers through the evening hours. The high today, 89. The low tonight, 68. Then for tomorrow and Saturday, the sky's sunny both days. Afternoon highs very close to 90 degrees. I'm James Spann on the ABC 3340 Weather Center. Center on Tide 100.9. The best sports talk in the state. Tide 100.9 and streaming on the Tide 100.9 app. Coming up in a couple of minutes, I'm going to ask him just point blank. We're going to talk about these Heisman odds. We're going to talk about Alabama and the projections because some of these folks are not projecting that Alabama will be there. Uh, and we talk about, hey, the doubt is out there. The doubt is out there. And we're also going to go back to Graham Nicholson, Miami of Ohio head football coach Chuck Martin, who's still butthurt after Alabama stomped a mud hoe in him in 2012. He was part of Brian Kelly's Notre Dame. See, you can, I'm telling you, you can always chase – the fatigue, the Alabama fatigue syndrome is real, not just for media members, but coaches, assistant coaches, staff members. 2012, Chuck Martin was a part of that coaching staff at Notre Dame when Alabama beat them 42 to 14. We played the Manti Teo audio. We're going to Brad Powers coming up here in just a couple of minutes. We're going to dive into that. We're going to take your phone calls. JR, don't go anywhere. We're going to take you the first after Brad Powers. He's next in Tuscaloosa. I do remind you about Big Mike's if you're looking for a great steak. Always the great option. The chicken parmesan is an option. 
Uh, the trigger fish is one of their specials, but it's the great steaks. Voted by the Alabama Cattlemen Associ Association as the best steak in the state of Alabama. You can find it in downtown Moundville. You can find it in Andalusia, Orange Beach, Gunnersville, Alabama. Our good folks right there at Big Mike's from about 15 minutes from, from where I'm located here uh, in Moundville. We'll continue. Brad Power is going to talk some odds. We're breaking down some college football with him. We'll talk about the upcoming season from his projection standpoint next. T-Town Tide 100.9, 1230 WTBC, your home of Alabama Crimson Tide Sports. Usually checked at least once or twice a year. Let your doctor know you are concerned about the health of your kidneys and ask what you can do to keep your kidneys healthy. Southern Owl House, 1530 McFarland Boulevard. As you know, it's one of my favorite places. Eat Southern, be Southern, the daily lunch and dinner specials, the great menu that features that Southern cuisine, like the bacon wrap meatloaf, the fish and taters, the biscuit sandwiches, the great steaks, the great chicken entrees, great sandwiches, including the pickle burger, the Owl House burger, the yard bird, great desserts, and always that featured bread pudding that Brett Garner's cooking up. Let Southern Owl House cater your special. Feeling these changes within just a couple of days. Text support to 511-511. These statements have not been evaluated by the FDA. This product is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Tax fees may apply. WTBC Tuscaloosa and W265CG Tuscaloosa, a town square media station. Tide 100.9 and streaming on the Tide 100.9 app. From the Fox Sports Studios in Los Angeles, here's Dan Beyer. The Yankees and Guardians play day baseball in the Bronx. And the pitch. Swing and a fly ball. Deep down the right field line. Brennan's only going to watch. It is gone. Onto the porch. Aaron Judge. Home run number 48. On the Yankees radio network. And that solo home run was all the Yankees needed. They topped the Guardians today 6 nothing. John Carlos Stanton hit home run number 21 on the season. A three-run shot for the Bronx Bombers. Cubs just closed out the Tigers 10-2 at Wrigley. While the Cardinals have a 3 nothing lead on Milwaukee. That's in the eighth inning. The Mariners are firing Scott Service after almost nine seasons in Seattle. Mariners just wrapped up a 1-8 and road trip. Dodgers designated veteran Jason Hayward for assignment, making room for Chris Taylor to return to action. Falcons gave A.J. Terrell a four-year extension as the cornerback's deal is worth $81 million. I got spirit, I got faith. I might bend, but I won't break. I'll fight the elements. And I'm a go down A professional handicapper that we love to be able to feature during college football. It's Brad Powers Sports. It's Brad Powers 7. And Brad Powers, we welcome you back to Tuscaloosa. I hope you're having an amazing day. Hey, thanks for having me, as always. All right, Brad, before we get started, I, I was hoping that maybe you could give some advice because we, we, you and I have been doing this for several years. I'm very thankful that you're part of our show. We love to hear your analysis, but I want you to talk to the people out there that place a little bit of a action, that have a little bit of fun on some sports, might have put a couple of coins on a game. What's the number one advice would you give somebody, and not as a professional, but as an amateur that looks at it? Uh, shop, just have, uh, you don't have to have 10 or 12, what we call out different places to bet, but just the, you know, going from one place, or I only bet at this place, the three increases your chances of winning, uh, just by shopping for the best number at three different books instead of one increases your chance of winning significantly. So that would be number one advice. Okay. Uh, what's your, what's your policy on parlays? Do you like them? Do you don't like them? Yeah, I mean, the way the public bets, I'm absolutely not. I think it's horrific. Uh, it's so, uh, but, I mean, I'm not saying that I don't ever make a parlay. I just, when I make a parlay, there's correlation. Whether, you know, I if, if I like this team to win, and the reason why I think that they're going to win this game or cover the point spread is because of uh, the, their ability to slow the game down as an underdog, to, per se, then, yeah, I'm going to correlate the, the underdog with the under. Uh you know, the, the, the bad weather in this region of the country. I'm going to correlate all the games played in the state of North Carolina because there's an incoming hurricane. They haven't canceled the games yet. I'll correlate, you know, I'll parlay, you know, four or five games to the under. I mean, that's the kind of stuff that, that I, I, I do uh, when, when I'm, uh, you know, parlaying. Uh, I'm not just saying, oh, I like this bet. I like that. Well, these are my five favorite bets of the week. I'm going to parlay, throw them all in a parlay, and here we go. I, I don't do that. Brad, you're also a guy that 
but you do place a lot of bets. I mean, compared to the average handicapper, is your number a little higher? Because I mean, I, I just follow your work. I don't really, you know, I don't, I don't. I mean, I do see other people's work, but it seems like you also place a lot of games. Is that a fair statement? Well, yeah, I use the term handicapper. So yeah, I mean, it, it, I certainly make more bets than, than than your average handicapper. But that's me, the better, not necessarily me, the handicapper. Me, the handicapper, giving out my favorite bets of the week. Obviously, I'm not giving out, you know, because I'm betting 100 games a week. I'm not giving out 100, you know, bets a week. It's just, you know, number one. The the, the 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 customers or the listeners or whoever is uh, getting those bets can't get those numbers usually. So, yeah, the, the volume I give out is quote-unquote best bets is certainly probably in line with everybody else. Uh, but uh, I, I me, the better. Yeah, I, I'm super high volume because I just I feel like I have an edge, whether it's FBS, FCS, you name it, college football is my wheelhouse, and I'm not afraid to make a wager. And just to put that in perspective, I mean, I'm closing in on 400 bets, and we haven't even started the season yet. Brad, if, if people want to get your exclusive picks to be able to, to subscribe to your VIP side of things, what, what's the best, best method before we kind of get into some games here? Well, I mean, the VIP service, I'll just say this. I mean, if you don't have a significant bankroll and you're not betting several hundred dollars per game, not worth your time. Uh, just uh, don't, don't do it. Don't stress your bankroll. I, I would say 90% of your listeners, I, I would say not in your best interest because not, not only in not having sufficient funds, but also to bet my VIP stuff. I and mean, you got to be in front of the computer when I say, hey, we're going to have an update at this time. I'm going to give out a couple plays. You have to be at your computer. Otherwise, you're not going to get those lines because my the, the, the bets that I give out move within a minute or two minutes. The line's gone because I, I have what they call market influence. So uh, <laughs> I didn't do a good sales job here, but... I would say majority of people, if you're interested, follow me on X, listen to me in, in this segment on a weekly basis. And then if you're really in, in serious about it, maybe dip your toe in the water and get the weekly newsletter where it's just me, you know, you know, writing up every single game and get my thought process. And, and then you can see also what, what I'm betting throughout the week. And that's just 40 bucks for the entire year. And Brad Powers Sports, Brad Powers 7 on the Twitter account. So if you're looking for that good advice, and I'm going to ask you about some things, but let's go to the game uh, this weekend because I think I, I saw you tweet it first. We have seven college football games uh, this weekend, but the one game that we're looking in the top 25 is Florida State. Florida State goes to Dublin, Ireland against Georgia Tech. Florida State minus the 10 and a half. Any value here? Oh, no, not really on the side or total as far as I'm concerned. Uh, we've seen the number come down. Now, it flashed this week a few times at minus 10. If I would have woke up on Saturday morning and, and it's the first game, you, you, you want to you wanna have something on it. Uh, I, I would lay it with – if you see Florida State minus 10, I think that's worth not a big bet, but a bet. Uh, so that, that's I'm just looking to see where, where the market goes there. But I it's not like a bet that I made all summer and been sitting and, and you know here and, and thinking that I have great value. There just isn't. Now, it's what we call derivative. Uh, I can tell you what I gave out to clients earlier today. I gave out a first half total under. It was 28. It's now 27 and a half. Obviously, very critical. 28 is a very fo general football score, but I, I did give out first half under. Uh, the, and the thought process there, Florida State, uh, the thinking is they're going to be really more run heavy this year, just personnel driven there. Uh, and, and obviously, it's a conference game. The teams are familiar with one another. Generally speaking, conference games are lower scoring than non-conference games. And uh, you, you, there's a feeling out process in, in college football early. Week one is lower scoring than week seven. All right. Let's go overall, but for the season. Is Florida State a playoff team in your eyes? Yeah, I, I got them in the playoff. Okay. And does that mean, oh, I think they're a top five team in the country? No, I just think they're the best team in the ACC still. So, uh, I, I, Mike Norvell is, uh, I, I know SEC people probably don't have much respect because they lost by 60 to Georgia, but uh, he's very good in the transfer portal, as good as anybody. Uh, and I, I, he filled it out his roster. I know a lot of holes in that roster coming off of last season and, and all the guys that went there early to the NFL draft, but I, they're a little bit better than the market's treating them right now. So I, 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 I definitely bet over nine wins. I think they'll win the ACC. Do I think they can win a couple of playoff games and get to maybe the semifinals or something? No, I don't see that. SMU at Nevada. SMU 25 up in Reno. That's about where I made it. Uh, it the line's been significantly on the move all summer. It opened as low as 18 and a half. I, 
and it did get up to 27. There's been some buyback this week on Nevada. SMU's injury report wasn't great. There's talks about the, them playing their backup quarterback in, in the second half of the game. I actually think that might be a positive for SMU if they continue to run their offense. Uh, but right now, no, it would need to go down to 24 for me to, to save value on SMU. But SMU seems to be a team that's gamed a lot of momentum. Uh, you, you feel like that this is a program that's projected to kind of trend up. Well, I mean, they're off there from a power ratings aspect. They're off their best season in 40 years last season, and they got 16 returning starters. I mean, 16 returning starters is the, the exception, not the rule anymore in college football. So they're one of the most experienced teams in the country. If you go through their starting lineup, a lot of these kids are, are the former uh, power fork schools. So uh, there's some talent there. We'll see how they can, can handle an ACC schedule. I have a little bit of doubts there, but. Uh, they have money. They have backing. They're all in. They want to win. Uh, they're, they're back to, uh, they, 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 as far as their alums are thinking, we can get back to the early 80s. And uh, there's a reason why they did a, you know, a 30 for 30 on, on this program. That they, they do want to win. Uh, and now when you legalize a lot of the things they were doing in the early 80s, and now that's on the up and up, uh, this is a program that to keep an eye on in the future. Who's the best team in college football, according to Brad Powers? Uh, it's Georgia uh, over over Ohio State. So I mean, my top four go goes as follows: It's uh, Georgia one, Ohio State two, Oregon clearly third, and now I have Alabama four. Okay. Oh, so you've moved Alabama up a little bit? Yeah, they, I moved them ahead of Texas. Okay. Oh, why? Why, why such? Uh, I mean, I know because we've talked, you know, about once a month for the last uh, off season. We talk every week during football season. But what what was the decision process there? I, you know, that minor, it's not like there was much separating, but the cluster injuries that running back for, for Texas had me downgrading them. And then again, Alabama is just better than what I expected originally. So I had a lot of anti-Alabama positions when the Saban news broke. There was markets up. I mean, you could bet on the Georgia-Alabama game when the Saban news broke. You could bet Alabama's win total when the Saban news broke. So I went from originally being pessimistic about Alabama to Every bet that I made in the last couple months uh, with uh, Alabama in mind has been pro-Alabama. Alabama to make the playoffs. Alabama to cover against the Wisconsin So um, and some other bets. So uh, Alabama to win the SEC. So I, I've been relatively pro-Alabama here the last six weeks, at least compared to market. You have been. You know, you're, you're a guy that, I mean, you explain why you believe in Kaylin DeBoer. I mean, you've talked about that publicly here on this show multiple times. Uh, but I still see people that are in the media, not in your position, like Ralph Russo, AP voter. Uh, he's got Alabama not in the college football playoffs. He's not even close. Dan Mullen picked Alabama six uh, in the SEC. Six in the SEC, so that would be outside of the playoffs. So I'm still seeing a lot of doubt out there, which probably helps what uh, you do. I'm not saying that bookies uh, or sports books make their determine uh, on AP voters, but, uh, hey, there is some doubt out there around the tide. Yeah, I mean, well, there still is. I mean, I just bet them to make the playoffs, and I got plus money. So, I mean, the, the, <laughs> they're an underdog. That blows to, my mind, Brad. I just can't. Yeah. I mean, if this team is not in playoffs, they, they're they going to have a lot of injuries. A lot of injuries. Well, I mean, I, I think the thought process is, is you know, 9-3 and three is, you know, there. I mean, there's a reason why the total, the, the win total is 9.5 with the under juice. So, I think a lot of people think they're on the outside looking in and 9-3 and three in the playoffs. I think there's a shot they make the playoffs at 9-3. and three. I think a program like Alabama is going to get the benefit of the doubt, especially with the schedule that they play. Uh, so I, I think there's a chance they can make the playoffs at 9-3. and three. And I, I mean, you have to narrow me down right now. I think the most likely record is 10-2. and two. And if they're 10-2, and two, they're slam dunk in the playoff. Going back to the Clemson-Georgia game to kind of get started, um, do you give Dabo and the, and the Clemson Tigers uh, any chance here to beat the Dogs in Atlanta? I no chance to win, but I, I, you know, I'm coming around to them covering the point spread. It's up to 14. Georgia has not had a good fall camp as far as injuries and off field distractions. Uh, I, you know, this is one where I, I, I think Clemson can stay within 14. Okay. Okay. Uh, seems like it'd be a very important year for them. I want to ask you about Tennessee when you look at Tennessee, because it, it's a team that I don't know if we focus enough on. Uh, when you look at their win total, what's it about nine and a half? What do you think about uh, this upcoming season for Tennessee up in Knoxville? Yeah, very disparate uh, win totals. I mean, some places eight and a half, some places nine and a half. I took the pessimistic side and bet under nine and a half uh, wins. Boy. I like Nico. I just, you know, we've only seen him play, you know, one game, uh, a sig you know, against Iowa, a team that was playing with one arm tied behind their back, on, you know, with no offense. So, uh, 
I need to see a little bit more there. I'm worried about the secondary to say the least. I think they're okay up front in the defensive line, uh, but secondary is a major question mark. I don't know if they have as much depth at running. They certainly don't have as much depth at running back as they had the last couple of years. Wide receivers will be okay, but but nothing near what they were two years ago at the wide receiver position when they made that run uh, and won double digit wins. So I I don't know. I I, I think they're a top twenty team, uh, maybe borderline top fifteen. That in itself is better than what Tennessee for the most part's been for the last couple of decades. But I I don't have them a slam dunk. Yep, this team's going to the playoffs this year. Brad, let's go back to the Auburn Tigers. I asked you probably two months ago about this team. I don't know if that uh, thought process has changed, but what do you think about Auburn in 2024? Yeah, I've been under seven and a half wins. Under? Not one of my whoa, favorites. Whoa, whoa, yeah, whoa, whoa, I... whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold, hold on. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> I mean, we're going to put you in the Grand Marshal of the Christmas Parade here. Under seven and a half for the Auburn Tigers? Yeah, I mean, go through their schedule. I mean, they'll be clearly an underdog in six of their 12 games. Uh, that doesn't necessarily equate to six and six, but – they're going to have to pull you know multiple upsets to get to eight and four, and then to obviously take care of business in every game they're favored in. Something they didn't do last year. Obviously, you look at a New Mexico State situation. So, uh, boy, I think they're improved. Uh, I, I like what I've read through fall camp. Now, would I make under seven and a half win bet now? No, I'd probably just pass. So, because uh, I, I, I do think the wide receiver position is going to be better than I expected. So there's that, but. Uh, I, I, I didn't play it back. I didn't like, oh, oh my goodness, I got to go ahead and, you know, everything I read in the fall camp, I got to play over seven and a half. I haven't done that. Are you bullish or bearish on the Ole Miss Rebels? They seem to be a lot of topic of conversation uh, around Lane Kiffin's uh, team over at Oxford. Neutral. Um, boring answer, but, I mean, on one hand, I, I have them number six in my power, preseason power ring, so I, I think they deserve it. I, I mean, the team won 11 games last year. The only losses were on the road against Georgia and Alabama. That was a pretty good season, and they got a lot coming back, and they did a really good job in the portal. But on the other hand, how do they handle preseason expectations? Kiffin and his long, you know, he's entering year 14 as a head coach already uh, through various places. He's never had big time back to back, you know, 10, 11 type of win seasons in his career. So I have some question marks there, and uh, I, I had the, the win total is nine and a half. I think Choke you Public's going to stay over. Uh, just because they're, they're going to be clear-cut favorites in 10, maybe 11 of their 12 games. Uh, but uh, I, I haven't got to the window yet over or under there. Let me ask you about Oklahoma. When you look at 2024, the transition to the SEC. Yeah, I mean, the schedule is much more brutal than uh, than Texas uh, as far as the draw they got in the SEC. But, you know, Oklahoma, I think defensively is going to be pretty good, at least better than what they've been the last few years under Lincoln Riley and the first couple of years under Venable. So they have that. Uh, I think Jackson Arnold will eventually be a pretty good quarterback. But I'm really worried about the offensive line. Uh, that's their biggest question mark on the team. And entering a, a much more physical conference is a concern, especially with their back half of the schedule being so difficult. Uh, win total seven and a half numbers say to play over but that's when i haven't played over yet i want to go back to alabama just just for a couple of minutes here and and we'll let you go after this we're talking to brad powers professional handicapper brad powers sports.com brad powers sports.com brad powers seven on the twitter account because there's so much unknown about where K1 DeBoer is going to take this offense. When you look at Western Kentucky next week, the line is currently at about 31 and a half, 30 and a half. I see that range right there between 30 and a half and 31 and a half. Is it one of those that you look at and you could think, well, K1 DeBoer may not show everything in his mind. Uh, he's going to be a little conservative before they go to Wisconsin, or maybe they play Georgia if they don't have to show everything. Uh, how do you calculate that in your head when you look at this big spread offensively? We think this is going to be a really good offense, but you also kind of calculate, well, maybe they're not going to show everything initially. Yeah, it's a good question. There are probably too many unknowns for me to, sure. to get involved. I mean, my, my, my numbers say I think if this was week three or week four and the disparity between my power ratings and the number would say, hey, you need to make a bet on Alabama at minus 31. Uh, ugh, there's just way too much for me to, to get involved at this point. If I had to bet it now, I'd probably play over 59 and a half because I, uh, I do think the offense will be better. I do think that the, the, they'll run a little bit more tempo. Maybe he does want to, you know, put something out there for the fans, get a good positive start to the season. Uh, defense certainly. I mean, I think they're okay. I just don't know if they're. It's not going to be a 2011 Alabama type <laughs> defense. And certainly not even close to that. So I think Western Kentucky can move the football. So lean over 59 and a half. But look, I have made 
uh, 65 week one bets already. I'm not bet the cider total is not a part of the portfolio yet. Okay. Okay. Uh, Brad Powers, Brad Powers Sports, Brad Powers 7 on the Twitter account. Brad, I always enjoy our chats. I know we'll do a day early next week because Thursday is going to be super, super busy, but I'm always excited to welcome you back for another college football season. All of us in Tuscaloosa say thank you. It's, it's highly popular segments. Uh, from when you and I started doing this, uh, I guess, four or five years ago, and just how sports gambling has taken off. I mean, I mean, people love to hear the data points because you guys remove a lot of the bias, and you're biased towards the green, uh, not to a color of a, uh, of a, of a football team and, and, and the school color. So I uh, appreciate you as always, Brad. I appreciate you having me. Look forward to talking to you throughout Abs- the season. Absolutely. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. And uh, we we always enjoy featuring Brad Powers, professional handicapper. We've been doing it. This may be year number five. I've got to go back and really track that. But uh, Brad Powers 7, Brad Powers Sports. We'll come back. JR, get ready. More K-1 aboard audio headed your way. But I want to set the stage for those who didn't hear it. Chuck Martin, Miami of Ohio head football coach, threw out some allegations against the University of Alabama. Did you hear it? You will next. T-Town Tide 100.9-1230 WTBC. Your home of Alabama Crimson Tide Sports. West Alabama real-time news update from the Tuscaloosa Thread Newsroom. Police are investigating after an unidentified body was discovered decomposing behind a shopping center in Northport Wednesday. Mayor Walt Maddox has given his 2025 budget recommendations to the city council. They include higher water bills, raises for all city employees, and the creation of an unprecedented drone first response team. Finally, the demolition of the downtown Tuscaloosa News Building is likely to begin in October to make way for the Saban Center. For the details on these stories and more, get connected at TuscaloosaThread.com. Get 24-7 local news coverage and sports updates when you download the free Tuscaloosa Thread app and sign up for twice daily email newsletters. Tide 100.9 traffic. Tuscaloosa traffic now from the Townsend Nissan Traffic Center. All in all, we're not doing too bad on this Thursday afternoon. 69 northbound onto Union Chapel Road. You're moving with a purpose. Lurleen Wallace, it's a little patchy, but it's moving on the northbound side mainly. And you got that right there at McFarland Boulevard and that's the usual and so all of your CPAP needs including the new Luna Travel CPAP call 339-8013 or stop by MedSouth in the North Brook Plaza on McFarland Boulevard Pat's Floors and Gourmet Baskets in downtown Tuscaloosa 1010 Queen City Avenue for over 60 years they've been serving our community they specialize in a large inventory of fresh flowers Weddings, gourmet fruit baskets. If you're trying to lift someone's spirits, it is Pat's Floors Gourmet Baskets by calling 205 345 5093. Delivery options are available, but it's more than just flowers at Pat's Floors and Gourmet Baskets, 1010 Queen City Avenue. I new vehicles to serve our clients. Purchase tickets before they sell out at eswachampionsball.com. That's eswachampionsball.com. Nukes Eatery, they're on the fringe of the campus of the University of Alabama. Alabama, close enough that you can smell the championships. The Nukes Q sandwich, still the number one sandwich across the franchise. The French dip sandwich, I think, is going to challenge for that number one spot. The double club, the single club, you can pair those up with a great sandwich, salad, California-style pizzas, all available for catering from a group of five to 500, a small office party to a large corporate event. Joel Bromfield, they've done a great job for my family. They'll when you buy a select tool at the Home Depot, how doers get more done? Limit one per transaction, exclusions apply, full eligible tool list in store and online. Tide 100.9, Tuscaloosa weather. A partly sunny sky this afternoon, the chance of a few isolated showers through the evening hours. The high today, 89, the low tonight, 68. And for tomorrow and Saturday, the sky's sunny both days. Afternoon highs very close to 90 degrees. I'm James Spann on the ABC 3340 Weather Center on Tide 100.9. You're inside the game on your home for Alabama sports. Tide 100.9 and streaming on the Tide 100.9 app. And I've already seen it, the Auburn Tigers out 
there, those fans, those fans, uh, fans of the Cal College, they're already, uh, hey, they're reacting. Oh, look, look, look. Kevin DeBoer is in trouble. No, he's not in trouble. Uh, this is just a butthurt uh, coach up in Miami, Ohio, by the name of Chuck Martin. And this is the comments that he made, the allegations earlier today when he talks about Graham Nicholson and losing. He said Alabama stole his quarterback. Well, listen closely. There's some allegations here. And uh, according to Chase Goodbread, he's followed up with the NCAA. And they have not reported this. So, Chuck, uh, either you know, back up what you said or we'll take an apology. Uh, your choice. Here's the conversation. All right, special teams lost your kicker, Carter McLaughlin. He's at. We didn't lose him. He's at Alabama. We know yeah, exactly. I understand. We know exactly that. where I, he's at. Like, I, I, we, again, uh, you media people, it's all pretend. Like, no, Alabama stole our kicker. Uh, I, yes, they illegally they, did. they illegally recruited our it, they coach. illegally recruited our kicker and stole him from us. And like that's <laughs> that's a fact. But that's that's God. But we act like it's not. We live in this la la world. Like, hey, let's not oh, talk. Re- I don't know why Here everybody knows what's going on. So, yeah, <laughs> Alabama stole our kicker. <laughs> Um, a couple, other, a su- right a couple other schools try to steal it, but then they okay. What's the Let's question? Talk All right, sp- <laughs> Chuck Martin still still kind of butthurt a little bit over that whipping Alabama gave him back. He was assistant coach on Brian Kelly's 2012 team that played Alabama, so uh, still a little butthurt. 42 to 14. Kevin DeBoer was asked about this earlier today, uh, and and the way that he responded, uh, he said, "Hey, uh, matter of fact, we'll just let's let's do it." Kevin DeBoer talking about. I was asked about Graham Nicholson, and this is how he responded. Before we get started, the uh, Miami of Ohio coach accused you guys of tampering with the recruitment of Graham Nicholson. Do you have a response to that? I don't know anything about that, I guess, that comment. Um, yeah, I mean, he entered the portal, and we reached out to him. So uh, that's how it goes, right? So uh, we did everything the way you're supposed to. There it is. Uh, JR, Coker, Alabama. JR, good afternoon. You're in the game. I hope all is well. Hey, JR. Oh, it's doing better. Yeah, good. 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 Hey. Yeah. Hey. Uh, but anyway, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you good. You sound crystal clear. All right, great. Good. Um, you sound like the Alabama Crimson the... Tide. You sound rolling. I mean, you you just you sound good. <laughs> Well, Miami, Ohio coach, talking about the kicker. He's butt hurt. He's, um, t- he's still he's still hurting from that <laughs> whipping Saban give him uh, gave him down in uh, Miami Gardens. Well, I heard DeBoer say it, that he entered the, the transfer portal. But but did Alabama? Do you know of or did you think they did offer him any NIL money? I don't know if they offered him any NIL money, but. Uh, I, I don't I don't have that you know any points I guess you could you know if we were ever given a chance but I, I... well if he if he did I could understand the coach being <laughs> being sore but, about but, it because but, I but, can't but, stand but, the NIL or JR, the portal. But regardless of you and I don't like it and I'm I'm right there with you I don't like it but it's part of college football but it's, it's there it's legal yeah, now. it's there it's I mean, yeah there's there's nothing you and I can do about it yeah. And to say it like we stole their kicker, you know, that's that's a little bit uh, harsh. Because I mean, anyway, but um, I'm glad we got a good kicker. We needed one. I understand. And, and Pretty had, doggone good. Well, he he had a couple of rusty. Uh, he got in a little bit of a funk, probably the early part of camp. Because I remember asking Kaylin about you know in a press conference about the specialist, and he updated us on both him and James Burnup, but he also talked about, you know, Graham Nicholson and, and the leg that he's got. The first scrimmage did not go very good. The second scrimmage went much, much better. But listen, it's kind of like kicking. Um, I mean, you're kicking for the Alabama Crimson Tide. It's kind of like pitching for the New York Yankees. It's a different well, pitcher. Not, you know. not only that, you got not only that you got a new new hold, somebody holding the ball different. They have to get the timing right and everything. Sure. So, but, you, but anyway, you've got a chance to have one um, of the best specialists in the country: punter, James Burnup, kicker, and then you also got to go Neil and Hibbett, which is a uh, you know a great snapper as well. And for those who may or may not remember him, but uh, that's Dennis Holman's grandson, wide receiver. Uh, that was a historic wide receiver here at the University of Alabama back in the '60s. Oh, seems like I remember that name. I know you do, because you know when Amari yeah. Cooper was breaking all those records, he was breaking <laughs> Dennis Holman's record. Oh, okay. All right. 
His whole one had a few, huh? He did. No, he had quite a few. Yeah. So, uh, who who was the quarterback throwing to him? Uh, Kenny Stabler. The name it. Kenny Stabler. Stabler. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Stabler. He was he was great. And a brand, a 66, 67. He, yeah, he was a part of the 66, 67. I don't know that. I mean, I'm I'm literally just going yeah. off of you know research, but it's uh, yeah those years. And somebody out there that may know a little bit more about it than I do, but Dennis Holman is. Uh, a great ambassador of the University of Alabama, and he's, he's very, very humble in some of his stats. I know he was very proud of what Amari was able to do. But, I mean, think about a record that stood at Alabama from the 60s to when Amari Cooper broke it. Um, I guess that would have been 2014 with Blake Sims as the quarterback. Yeah. yeah well, that's pretty good. Well, listen, uh, you, uh, you've been asking about uh, – Percentage? What, what was it? What was the? What we're we're doing sacks. Again we're the, doing sacks college? today. Yeah, sacks. Sacks. Oh, uh, well. Remember right. you when you told me you were gonna help me through some situations? <laughs> oh, you want? Me to... I, I, I don't even hardly know any. I need you to tell me the players that are involved in this. Well, I would. Um, if, if you asked me and said if, I need some help, okay. And now, Jr. I feel, well, I need we got to ta- talk about this because it's got to be a discussion. You know, we gave away the grand prize package. Paul and Lincoln picked up that. Uh, so this is all about qualifying for the upcoming, you know, grand prize package that we'll do next year. Uh, but this is just a way that, you know, you kind of get a backdoor entry, right? You don't have to win a score prediction contest. Uh-huh. You don't have to win a parlay because you know how challenging those can be. You've won some, but you've. You've lost a few as well uh, when you look at those parlay picks. I mean, they're they're a little little bit of a challenge. So if you ask me, I would go – there's been a lot of people that took Jihad Campbell. I think that's a good number because I think you're going to drop him on the outside a little bit. I think you're going to see him. He was recruited here as an edge. I think you could see a number of sacks. But I also think that you may see a guy like LT Overton be the guy. I mean, he had three sacks in one scrimmage. Now you say, whoa, who was he going up against? Well – L.T. Overton is going to be a very dominant football player. Just know the name, L.T. Overton. So I, okay. I would go Jahad Campbell or L.T. Um, Overton, and I think you could just pick a number between 7 and 12, and I think you would have about the same odds of winning. Let me go with Overton, and I want to go with – can you go with half or just have to be? You know what? Plus, you can. Yeah, because enough. half is part of the stats. You Nobody else has done that, but you're welcome to. I mean, because it's a number, right? I mean, that, we have a measurement of halves, right? 12 and a half, 13 and a half, 12 and a, you know, 11 and a half. I mean, we'll see those numbers. So <laughs> nobody's done that, but JR, it's a smart well, move. I'm still gonna, I'm, I, I, thought of, I thought about it, but I'm still going to keep it simple. Okay. We'll go with 11. 11. Got it. 11. JR, what else is on your mind, my friend? Oh, uh, not much. Um, I'll try to call a little more often tomorrow's free for all Friday. I've been trying to call on a free for all Friday, but I couldn't get through last week. Yeah, we got a big show tomorrow. Man. We got uh, and, um, we got John Hanna, College Football Hall of Fame, Pro Football Hall oh, of yeah. Fame. He's going to be a part of our show tomorrow. We're going to talk about the pigskin uh, kickoff and. Uh, that's a big event coming up on Monday night that I'm a part of, Pigskin uh, Kickoff event with Ned Oates. Uh, Cedric Burns is going to be second. Then John Hanna, the College Football Hall of Fame, Pro Football Hall of Fame member. He's going to summarize everything for us, and it's a men's fellowship here. University Church of Christ, University Church of Christ, and uh, tickets are super, and I mean super, super limited, uh, down to the final couple of tickets here. So uh, I heard a little bit about that. Heard a little bit about that. You could sit in there with them. Yeah, yeah, Is that you, right. Yeah, being a, a small, I say small. I mean, I think it's fifty-two tables. Um, you know, times eight, so whatever that is, it's four hundred and sixteen. But uh, two times yeah. eight. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Jr. Thanks, cool. man. Well, I appreciate you very much, and roll tide, Ron. I appreciate you. Thank you. We'll take more of your phone calls. And listen, we had a lot of people got their sack numbers in, so I don't think that you're preventing somebody else from doing that if you want to do that. But K1 DeBoer talks about quarterbacks and why he, you know, some people consider him a quarterback whisperer. When you look at Michael Penix, you think about where he can take Jalen Milrow. 
Let him describe about the way that he trains a quarterback, his philosophy. We'll do that in two minutes right here on the game. T-Town Tide, 100.9, 1230 WTBC, your home of Alabama Crimson Tide Sports. MedCenterUrgentCare.com. We expect the unexpected. Locations in Tuscaloosa, Northport, North River, right there off Rice Mine Road, Fayette, Demopolis, Hoover, the great doctors, urgent care, family medicine, injuries, occupational health, sports physicals. We do expect the unexpected. MedCenterUrgentCare.com. The online check-in available. Significantly reduce your wait time. The super doctors who live and work in Tuscaloosa. MedCenterUrgentCare.com. With only 43 seconds remaining, facing a fourth and goal from the 31-yard line at Jordan-Hare Stadium, quarterback Jalen Milrow finds himself under immense pressure, scrambling to connect with Isaiah Bond in the corner of the end zone for a miraculous come-from-behind victory over Auburn. The jaw-dropping 27-24 result came on the 10th anniversary of the kick six. Daniel Moore is proud to announce fourth and 31 his upcoming oil painting featuring the now famous Grave Digger play. New Life Art is now accepting pre-orders for limited edition fine art prints and canvases of fourth and 31. See the preliminary pencil sketch for the artist's full color painting at danielwarart.com. Pre-order your organs that control growth. They also perform an important function by controlling blood pressure and minerals like calcium and potassium to keep the entire body healthy. Big Mike's downtown Moundville, only about 15 minutes from where I'm located, also in Gunnersville, Alabama, Thomasville, Andalusia, Auburn, Alabama, Orange Beach. You'll find one of the best steaks in the state of Alabama, voted by the Alabama Cattlemen's Association and many other great publications recognizing the great ribeye, the seafood entrees. You'll find those the great service, it is best pads and rotors together, you'll save 15%. It's just part of what makes us America's number one breaks destination. Get in the zone, auto zone. Catch every game and every moment right here. This is your home of Alabama sports. Tide 100.9 and streaming on the Tide 100.9 app. I think one of the expectations of this season, I think when you listen to Brad Powers, he said a couple of minutes ago, when you're looking at this Alabama football team, he thinks they're going to be exceeding expectations. I think some of that is you go back to the quarterback, right? You look at Jalen Milrow. He's got that year under his belt. Now he's ready to take that big next step. And I think most of us think that he'll take that big step. But what is it about K1 DeBoer and this offense that allows that quarterback to grow and develop, uh, you know, unlike some of the other coordinators that we've had, <clears throat> Bill O'Brien, <clears throat> Tommy Reese. Yeah, we didn't see quarterbacks grow, if anything. Might see them regress a little bit. Uh, but why is it that uh, K1 DeBoer's system allows quarterback to step up, take another big step? Here's how he responded to that question. Yeah, I would, I would say it's an everyday thing. It's an every rep thing when they come off. You know, you want to be able to go through with them what they were thinking, what uh, what they could, you know, do better, uh, what their, you know, just thought process, execution, all of that. And so 
there's tools you got to teach them. And, you know, I feel like for the most part, what they come in with, with emotion and things like that, you know, probably 85, 90% of that is what you're going to have to work with. So it's not about overhauling a throwing motion or anything like that. Uh, it's about really them grasping football, uh, them grasping what it takes to win, teaching them to be big, great leaders. You're working footwork drills. You're working, you know, um, you know, accuracy, you're working all those type of things too. But uh, just the mental piece, I think, is so important. And them, you know, feeling comfortable with what you're doing. I don't ever want them running a play where there's a split of, you know, just even a doubt in their mind of anything, whether it's them or that someone else doesn't know what they're doing that's lined up with them on the field. So it's just being in sync with them. And uh, as a quarterback, you know, having that communication, whether it's the coordinator and, and the quarterback, myself with both of them, um, you know, that's just so critical to, to be aligned and know our response because the quarterback's going to be seen, his body language, his, you know, what he says. Uh, we talk through all that, not just daily, but after almost every, you know, set of plays, you know, we're talking about those things and I'm, I'm highlighting it and, uh, with them, uh, emphasizing it with them. And I think just when you keep stacking those moments on top of each other, that's how you develop a great quarterback. Wow. What a comment. What a comment. When you think about that offense and if that offense does be able to click, it's all going to be about Jalen Milrow. I saw two, four, seven sports put up a team talent composite score. You know, who has the Best team as far as talent, composite talent, according to 247 Sports. That would be the 18-time national champ, the University of Alabama, Georgia, number two, Ohio State, three, Texas, four, five, the Clemson Tigers. That's the most talent on the roster, Alabama, Georgia, Ohio State, the top three schools. Let's go to Tommy and Romulus. Tommy, good afternoon. You're in the game. I hope all is well. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. How was was class this morning? Uh... Class, um, I, he has no uh, course number. He doesn't have a room, and he doesn't have a degree, so he's a fraud. You're producing a fraud for 30 minutes on every Thursday. Well, now, now whoa, 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 Tommy, 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 Tommy. Um, he said you I, didn't show up? He don't have a classroom, and I didn't sign it because, you know, I can't rest on I don't have a computer. So he misled you again. I thought he gave he gave you free tuitions, what I was under understanding. Nope. There's no course number. There's no room. Sitting watching a man on the front porch in his underwear drinking beer is not a course description. Is that what he does? Sit on the porch? It is I don't know what he's saying. Drinking beer in the summertime, he's in his boxers. Um, I mean, university. I, I just, I just hope he's not a toddy waddy guy. I don't want to even go there. Okay, well, I'm just, I'm saying. I mean, boxers, I you can, you can get up, you, you can get by <laughs> with. Uh, well, the toddy waddies, yeah, that that would not be a good look. So, well, pretty soon. Him and Joe Biden is going to get together. I was told. Okay, so basically, yeah, but, are you are you dropping the class? Is that what you're saying? You're not. You're not I gonna... can't rest. Or there's don't no class exists. They know instructor. He don't have a course number. He don't have a pair of pants to wear to class. So it's not a class. So that you're saying this is a fraud. I, I'm calling a fraud. Yes. Yeah. These this week has been a fraud week. Yeah. 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 I, I, yeah. I don't. I don't know. I don't know how we got into this situation. I mean, here we are. We're, you know, we've been counting votes all week, and uh, we're going to certify those coming up here in a couple of minutes. Well, they can't be certified because he didn't use a number two pencil. He's supposed to be up. If you're going to run a successful campaign, you're supposed to buy pencil number two lead pencil for your voter to fill in the X. I mean, come on, crayon and tobacco juice is not a legal way to vote. A spit on a ballot. Come on, and crayons. You gotta have. You know, I'm sorry. You're gonna bring. You're gonna be the so-called number okay. one dollar. If, bring if, the game. If I could, I yeah. If, if I could register you for this class, okay. Yeah. Would you? Uh, would you I take it? Oh, day in hell. No. You would not take it. Not at all. No. No way. I don't. I don't take frauds. 
I mean, we got too many of them in Montgomery and Washington. I mean, he's just trying to help you, Tommy. Why do I need help? I'm not saying you do or don't. I'm just saying, you know, it's it's part of it. No, he's just stroking his own little ego, make it feel important. I'm sorry. You and him have had a rivalry for a long time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you call me a liar, I take it personal. Okay. Yeah, but he apologized for that, didn't he? Or no? No, I never, oh, he never heard did. Him Who has he ever apologized to? Come on, Ron. Who has he apologized to? Oh, I don't know. I'm asking. That's I, what I'm saying. Yeah. I mean, you need you need to get white. All right, you won't have a weekend this weekend because it's going to take you 48 hours to find something positive, like Nick said about anybody. I apologize. No, 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 no. It's funny. He can call all these other shows, but he calls other shows, and he gives me a watching the Fine Bar show. I do. I watch the SEC Network. I watch the Big Ten. According to I Robert to from Brookwood, them. he says that's the I Hate Alabama Network. It is. It is. I mean, I said five moment, but you know, I, I'm twisting Troy, so I call five mom a new name. Oh, yeah, what'd you call him? A narcissistic mud writer. And somebody thought I said something else. I went, no, I didn't. Mud writer. When people used to get, uh, like a uh, National Choir story, they called him mud writer. And he does this. Right before, two weeks before the season, Tim, he starts his crap by month. And I watched the show last week with the 10th anniversary. I'm going to tell you something. It's awful, Ron. He played clips from the 10-year past. It's them arguing with Blake Tammy, who's all of it, and Phyllis, and this argument and phone feud. And I thought it was supposed to be a sport talk show. It's just people screaming at people. This ain't the Honey Boo Boo Network. We can talk sports over here, right? We try. We try. It doesn't always work, though. I mean, Tommy, we're... I understand it. Yeah, we got the, the weeds a lot of time. Yeah, but this ain't the Honey Boo Boo Network, no. Okay, so you're saying Professor Nick did not show up, uh, and you're you're still voting no? Well, I'm, it's on the IFL... I interrupt again. Is he didn't use number two lead pencil? He's not a resident of the state of Alabama. I mean, but you know, there's some shady stuff going over over in the state of Georgia. That's right. And row one, I like Josh. I don't want to insult him, but some of his, his friends, uh, Nicholas, um, no, don't trust them. They can't fix their own state. Heaven forbid. Don't come over here. Gotcha. All right, Tommy, uh, be good, man. Uh, you, you got your number in yesterday, did you not? Yeah, you did. I took Campbell, yeah. Yeah, Campbell yeah. at nine. That's a solid one right there, man. I think that's... Well, if, but if I do think more, he could go a lot of different ways. I mean, I, I think you go yeah. LT Overton, you go Jihad Campbell. I think you might even drop back and, and see, you know, one of your secondary members get up there. I, it could be so jumbled up that you could see a secondary guy because uh, they're going to blitz you. This is going to be a little different defense than we're accustomed to in the past. Well, I believe this. Uh, if he has six or seven or nine sacks in the first six games, then the other team is going to do something. They're going to double team and do something, and that's going to open up other opportunities for, like you say, Overton and other people to uh, get sacked. I don't think you can key on one man. I think it's going to be a good year for sacks. I think it's going to be a great year for interception. Gotcha. I'm really hot. So. There we go. Thank you, man. I appreciate you, Tommy. All right. You have a great day, Road Todd. Hey, right back to you. More Kay Winterbore audio headed your way in just a couple of minutes. We're taking more of your phone calls. One hour left as we roll on. Nine days away. Brought to you by Alabama Credit Union, Med Center, Urgent Care, Family Medicine. No appointment necessary. The super doctors who live and work in our community. It is Med Center, Urgent Care, Family Medicine, Med Center, UrgentCare.com. The super doctors who live and work in our community. Ellen in Knoxville. We'll get to you coming up here in just a couple of minutes. T-Town, Tide, 100.9-1230, WTBC, your home of Alabama Crimson Tide Sports. Oh, we kind of rock, go to Electric Avenue, and then we'll take it higher. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. 
go inside the Alabama Crimson Tide with the Gary Harris Show. Hey, everybody. It's Gary Harris coming up Friday morning at 9 a.m. It's the TGIF edition of the Gary Harris Show, and are we going to be cranking it out for you? The voice of the Crimson Tide, Chris Stewart, will join us for an Alabama football preview, plus Larry the Music Man and Brett Pritchard with the Auburn Report, and your phone calls as well. That's Friday morning at 9 a.m. on the Gary Harris Show. Catch the Gary Harris Show Monday through Friday, 9 to 11 a.m. on Tide 100.9 and Tide100.9.com. Tide 100.9 Traffic. Tuscaloosa traffic now from the Townsend Nissan Traffic Center. Looking at typical slow ups and flows around the area inside construction zones. And McFarland Boulevard is one of those zones on the east and west front lanes between Jack Warner Parkway and Lurleen Wallace. And so that gets slow and go from time to time. Also 2059 eastbound from Western Bypass. And these changes are within just a couple of days. Text support to 511-511. These statements have not been evaluated by the FDA. This product is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Tax fees may apply. Tide 100.9, Tuscaloosa weather. A partly sunny sky this afternoon, the chance of a few isolated showers through the evening hours. The high today, 89, the low tonight, 68. Then for tomorrow and Saturday, the sky's sunny both days. Afternoon highs very close to 90 degrees. I'm James Spann on the ABC 3340 Weather Center on Tide 100.9. Light up those phone lines on the game with Ryan Fowler. 205-342-9904. You're inside the game. On your home for Alabama sports, Tide 100.9, and streaming on the Tide 100.9 app. a special code word that we are doing to approach the road to 19. That starts literally in nine days. That's brought to you by Alabama Credit Union. But DanielMoreArt.com, which we've had a great partnership. We give away a lot of great things, uh, courtesy of New Life Art, Daniel Moore Art. And we're going to run a special code here for a few days, 19% off everything. Literally everything. You could go mini print. You could go large print. You want to walk in and buy the biggest print. It's 19% off everything. Code word, the game. The game, 19% off any product that they've got on their website, danielmoreart.com. So if you're thinking about, well, I need to buy this, I need to buy this, I'm thinking about buying 4th and 31, I'm thinking about buying the Legacy Continues print. They're very limited with those prints. They've already sold out of the Nick Saban gigantic prints, but they've got some of the smaller prints. You can find those, any print on the website, any of the items that they sell, danielmoreart.com, danielmoreart.com. 19% 19% off discount on the road to 19. When will it start? We'll ask Alf coming up. Uh, and I wonder if Bama Nick is going to show up for class. Tommy said he did not show up for class. Looks like he's missed his first obligation. I mean, he had Thursday at 5. I don't see a Bama Nick up on the call board. Alf, you're next. T-Town, Todd, 100.9, 1230 WTBC. You're home of Alabama Crimson Tide Sports. Keep on pushing my mind. WTBC Tuscaloosa and W265CG Tuscaloosa, a town square media station. Tide 100.9 and streaming on the Tide 100.9 app. From the Fox Sports Studios in Los Angeles. Here's Dan Byer. Aaron Judge, home run number 48 on the season. Giancarlo Stanton added a three-run shot. Yankees blink the Guardians 6-0. Cardinals a 3-0 winner against the Brewers, while the Nationals took care of the Rockies 8-3. Cubs out of the Tigers 10-2. And the A's lead the Rays in the 7-3-1. Mariners are firing Scott Service as their skipper. Spent almost nine seasons in Seattle. Dan Wilson expected to take over for the rest of the season as the M's are currently five back of the Astros for first place in the AL West. The Falcons made corner eight. A.J. Terrell, the second-highest-paid cornerback in the National Football League. His four-year, $81 million extension includes almost $66 million in guarantees. Eagles acquired wide receiver Jahan Dotson in a trade with the Commanders, while Jets quarterback Eric With Skechers' exclusive air-cooled memory foam. Find your new pair of Skechers safety toe and slip-resistant work shoes at a Skechers store, at Skechers.com, or wherever work shoes are sold. Northport Power Equipment, largest inventory Husqvarna dealer in the southeast. You'll find the Husqvarna models for residential and the professional landscapers, Skag commercial mowers, residential mowers, backpack blowers, handheld blowers, 
battery operated tools, the service department at Northport Power Equipment. Deal or text deal to 511-511. Text deal to 511-511 today. All dogs are unique. Your dog results can and will vary. Message and data rates may apply. Tennessee Byway One arm on the wheel Holding my lover With the other A sweet, soft, southern thrill Worked hard all week Got a little jingle On a Tennessee Saturday night 18 national titles It is 30 SEC titles 147 first-team All-American, 77 postseason appearances, 45 postseason victories, four Heisman winners, the NCAA all-time scoring leader, and the greatest football coaches in the country. We're talking a little Alabama Crimson Top football. We're powered by Tuscaloosa Toyota, tuscaloosatoyota.com. 3325 Skyland Boulevard and online at tuscaloosatoyota.com. We have entered the 5 o'clock hour. Um... Somebody had a segment here, but I, I guess, you know, if you're a guest, like if you're Barrett Salee, Jackson, you know, we're, we're not calling you. you got to call us. Uh, he didn't answer. He hadn't called in. So uh, How are we going to I mean, certify this election? Uh, no, we're, we're not going to be able to. We're, we're uh, Bama Nick, uh, this might be the history of the shortest segment in the history of radio. So uh, no Bama Nick. That means Alf. Alf, you may have Bama Nick's segment. I hope all is well. So you're saying that if the president – isn't there the vice president has I, to i mean has I, to run. i'm looking up at the call board i don't see any type of bama nick i don't see bama nick want nothing i mean he's he's didn't i, mean, I, I didn't I, yeah, I didn't even want to run for president i, I just i just want to listen to nick and you're saying he didn't even call in but he's not up on the call board yeah I'll, you I mean, think this is he, another it might be another coup it could be it could be i mean tommy said that he didn't show up to teach this training symposium that he's been talking about. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, sure. so, I, I mean, I, I don't know. Well, listen, I got well, I got I mean, a, yeah, there's a, there's a lot of yeah. things strange happening over Georgia, right? I mean, just a lot of weird stuff. A lot of, right. A lot yeah. of uh, and, uh, strange. He, yeah. He might've released himself from his own recognizance and, you know, and he might, I, there's just no telling Ryan. I, anyway, listen, I, I've got a bone to pick with the national media. Okay. Let it go. I, I heard a guy, I, you know, I heard a guy. Did you feel like Tua was whining yesterday, or t- a couple days ago? I guess when talking about Flores. Uh, help me! You, help me! Uh, you know, he was talking about you know, do you miss your old coach? You know, and you know, Tua was talking about well, you know, I, I, if somebody's going to tell you that uh, you're an awful football player for two years, you're going to start to believe it, and then somebody else comes in like McDaniel. And so, you know, all of a sudden, two is great now, you know, and Tua said, well, I, you know, and then Flores yesterday came out and said, you know, I've learned a lot or whatever he said. I don't know what he said. But the one thing that Tua is not a whiner. All right. Alf, you are literally educating me on every and, and I know this is crazy, but you get these Bama blinders on during camp. And I got to be honest with you. Yeah. I, I didn't know well, anything. I mean, okay, I, well, he, yeah, I just Googled what you were just talking about. All right, did you see it on the – okay, I'm sure you can read up on it. You know, Tua was asked if he misses uh, Flores, the old Dolphins coach. Uh, that, and, you know, it was well known that that was not the guy that uh, Flores wanted to draft. He thought Tua was too short, his arm wasn't strong enough, so on and so forth. And he really handicapped – now, Tua was hurt a couple times, but uh, he handicapped what Tua does best, which is get out of the pocket, make things happen. And uh, he is – he. You know, he's much more like the Kansas City quarterback than he is a Dan Marino. He is a make things happen out in the flat. And Flores never did use him that way. And Tua said he was questioning whether he should be playing football anymore. You can read the, the interview that he did. And he was asked that. He didn't come up and just say, hey, I want to sit here and talk about our old coach. He was asked that, and then he was asked a follow-up question. And Tua said, hey, this is, you know, 
he was just being real. He was being a guy. I don't think he was complaining. But Flores came out yesterday and was kind of a snide remark. And this is the same guy that is suing a couple of different NFL teams for, you know, not not interviewing him because he's a African American. You know, that, that's the kind of guy he is already. And then then he comes out and he says this about Tua. Uh, and, and, and then Tua says something that I think you and I would have said sitting around having dinner. And he takes offense to it. And the national guys are kind of jumping on Tua saying that well, he was whining about it. I don't think that's the case. And I'd really like, after you get caught up and, and read up on it, I'd, I'd really like to hear what you have to say about that. Yeah, I would. And, and also, Jackson was telling me this about Tua and Talia, that there's a book coming out uh, about Auburn. Or, hold on. Is it, is it about Tua? Is it about Auburn? J- Jackson, or I maybe- think it's about Tua. Okay, because uh, he came out the other day and said that uh, Tulio was looking at going to possibly play at Auburn. Yeah, because Auburn offered him like seven figures to transfer from Maryland down to Auburn, and he pretty yeah, much said, yeah, well, hey. yeah, well, yeah, he said, I'm an Alabama. We're an Alabama family. We're we're not going to right. We- yeah, those guys are snakes. And you talk about somebody tampering. If we're going to tamper, we're not going to tamper for a kicker. You know, we're going to. I mean, we needed a kicker, but we we'd be tampering for something a lot more high dollar than that. Anyway, that I just I think you need to run. I think it would be some uh, good reactions there. On I just don't, I believe in Tua. I've always thought he's a great young man, and I just don't like this mud being thrown at him. Okay. Well, yeah. I'd, like I said, I don't I don't know a lot about it, but I, I need to study up on it. But I'm getting a lot of messages from people that are listening, and, and maybe they can add more to it than I am. But uh, some of them, just based on my text message, say that that he was whining too. So I I don't know a lot about it. I really don't. I mean, I, I hate to bypass your question because I mean, no, no, I understand. I mean, you we are get, yeah, talking you to the to a tongue of Aloha fan club president here. I mean, right. I, I mean, yeah. I, I mean, I'm ashamed that you're kind of scooping me here, Alf. I mean, it's well. I mean, you know, if if listen, if if you're going to need a vice president to step up, then it's it's going to be somebody like me. You know, it's going to be somebody like 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 Harris. You know, we talked about yesterday. You know, thinking about building a border wall and not taxing the people who make tips. You know, I'm 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 trying to bring something to the table that's relevant now. You okay. see what I'm saying? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. I got one more. One more. I've got one more question for you, Ryan. Okay. Uh, Alabama going to win the national title? Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. What was the question? Uh, oh yeah. Right. Uh, well, hey, drink that Kool Aid, baby. Oh, you hold, know. On, hold on. Let me get. Uh, let me get another sip, bro. Mm. Okay. Mm. Oh yeah. Oh, that's good. Yeah, I, I take. Good. A, I take a lot of heat for not thinking it. But yeah. uh, you, here's you, my other question. I mean, the, the way that this Kool Aid right here tastes, Alf, is. Um, you remember when your parents would send you outside and play, and they wouldn't. I mean, mm. this, this is back in the day where you mm. know, we didn't have like the bottle of water; we had a hose pipe. And oh yeah, you know, you would come in out from out playing, and you know, you, your electrolytes uh, would be down, and you'd walk in, and that sure. Kool Aid would be right there. I'm not sure what was your favorite uh, color. Was it was it cherry? Uh, you, well, cherry was the deal, but if every once in a while we'd go up and get great. Oh yeah, great. Mm. Oh yeah, yeah. So that's what that tastes like. I mean, that Kool Aid. I mean, my mm. lips are stained with that Kool-Aid. I mean, crimson sure. Kool-Aid. Oh, yeah, baby. Sure. I understand that. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, here's Let me my get last some chapstick question. on, too. Oh. I know that's what they call me on the other show. Chapstick. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, listen, I, I can talk about uh, the uh, the guy on the other, the bald guy, because remember, he fired me before. So, oh, that's uh, right. Can, I, that's right. I'll talk about him all day. But anyway, uh, here's my question. He's a think goober. The Washington, the Washington team last year. Do you think that they would beat the Alabama team this year? Ooh, there's your debate. That's a good one right there. That'll that that'll spend some hours. Would 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 this Alabama team beat the UW team? Yeah, and and, I, and you know, I and I think it's a great debate. Also, which quarterback's better? I think it's Michael Penix right now. I mean, he's top ten guy. Um, yeah, I know that he went – well, he went top ten to the Falcons who would draft a janitor to be, you know, linebacker. But don't get me started on that. Uh, but I, I, I think at the end of the year, Alabama's going to be better, and I think that we're going to have – Jalen's going to be up there again for uh, Heisman. So, you know, that's what I've already said before. But, uh, yeah, man. All right. Hey, great show. Love it. Hey, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. We appreciate that. Uh, Alf helping us out there. We'll get back to more audio. Oh, I see. Robert, Robert, get ready. We're coming your way in a couple of minutes, but we still don't have – I mean – 
I've never heard of a guest scheduling a segment. He Maybe he needs to go to Tony classes. Tony doesn't have any problems showing up. The Pharmacy at Midtown, they don't have any problems showing up as well. The Pharmacy at Midtown, T.J. Thomas, he's the Nick Saban of Pharmacists. The Pharmacy at Midtown, the only sterile compounding facility here in Tuscaloosa, the only uh, sterile compounding, but they also offer compounding needs as well. 205-752-0627, the pharmacy at Midtown, pharmacymidtown.com. Easy to transfer your prescriptions, make that one phone call, let them do the work. They'll do the hard work of transfer. You go pay the same regardless of where you go. Independent owned pharmacy specializing in walk-in prescriptions, medicine on time, packaging, compounding needs. It is the longest independent owned pharmacy, the pharmacy at Midtown, the pharmacy at Midtown, T.J. Thomas, and uh, also we offer delivery as well. We have a retail side of the pharmacy at Midtown, uh, but multiple days a week you can have your, uh, you know, your your pharmac uh, your drugs delivered to you uh, from the pharmacy at Midtown. The far that just didn't come out very right. I mean, have your drugs delivered to you, right? Uh, the pharmacy at Midtown, your prescriptions. Maybe that'd be a better way to say that. Your prescriptions delivered to you. The Pharmacy at Midtown. The Pharmacy at Midtown. Robert, get ready. We're coming to you in a couple of minutes. T-Town, Tide, 100.9, 1230 WTBC. Your home of Alabama, Crimson Tide Sports. Hours West Alabama real time news update from the Tuscaloosa Thread Newsroom. Police are investigating after an unidentified body was discovered decomposing behind a shopping center in Northport Wednesday. Mayor Walt Maddox has given his 2025 budget recommendations to the city council. They include higher water bills, raises for all city employees, and the creation of an unprecedented drone first response team. Finally, the demolition of the downtown Tuscaloosa News Building is likely to begin in October to make way for the Saban Center. For the details on these stories and more, get connected at TuscaloosaThread.com. Get 24-7 local news coverage and sports updates when you download the free Tuscaloosa Thread app and sign up for twice-daily email newsletters. Tide 100.9 Traffic. Tuscaloosa traffic now from the Townsend Nissan Traffic Center. Found some trouble on 2059. This is in the westbound direction at Foster's. Watch out for that. That's got traffic. Uh, pretty slow in the area. Now, we're also slowing down and starting to really crank up your rush to home. And you guessed it. It's on Lurleen Wallace. Well, you didn't have to guess if you're sitting in it. Lurleen Wallace on the night. A chain of events that began two hours ago is about to change Kyle's whole world. Drive sober or get pulled over. Paid for by NHTSA. Blue Spring Living Water is located in Bluntsville, Alabama, Blunt County, about an hour north of Birmingham. Blue Spring Living Water is harvested and bottled from a centuries-old natural spring on a private family farm. Blue Spring is an all-natural water source that flows just under a million gallons a day. They have partnered with Waterway of Alabama and they've been in the water delivery business for over 30 years to have Blue Spring Living Water delivered right to your home, right to your front door every month. New customers get their five jugs for $50, and the empties are exchanged every month for new ones. I know we have it at the Fowler household. We drink more water because of bluespringlivingwater.com. You can sign up at 205-602-3426. Talk to someone directly. Blue Spring Living Water can also be found. Mark Rotors together, you'll save 15%. It's just part of what makes us America's number one brakes destination. Tide 100.9, Tuscaloosa weather. A partly sunny sky this afternoon, the chance of a few isolated showers through the evening hours. The high today, 89, the low tonight, 68. And then for tomorrow and Saturday, the sky's sunny both days. Afternoon highs very close to 90 degrees. I'm James Spann on the ABC 3340 Weather Center on Tide 100.9. It's the longest-running sports show in Tuscaloosa. You're listening to The Game with Ryan Fowler on Tide 100.9. Into the game here 
in Tuscaloosa Tide at 100.9, 1230 WTBC, your home of Alabama Crimson Tide Sports. Let's go to Robert. Robert, good afternoon, man. You're in the game. I hope all is well. All is well, brother. Maybe you can help me with something. High school football kicks off officially tomorrow night. I know uh, tonight. The third, tonight. Yeah, that's what I was getting to. Thursdays is usually the first games. Is they still play the traditional Thursday night game that's been going on for about fifty years, Gordo and Fayette. You know, I don't. I don't have the answer to that. I was just wondering. Why it just because we don't down. have a newspaper no more to, to read about high school sports. But. Yeah, you used to turn over that first page in the newspaper. The after the front page, the first yeah. page. And it would be right there. So, uh, yeah, I, I got to be honest. Uh, I don't have a well, schedule. Well, that comes to my second question, the Tuscaloosa News Building. If it gets tore down, or is, does that – it's already very circulated, very not very much anyway. Is that, does it for the Tuscaloosa News as far as paper? Or is no, it all no, digital? No, I mean, they're, they're, they're all digital. Yeah, so I guess I, – I, I know that – They still have a written paper, but they, they're like Sundays. It's just three – it's four or five pages, and you can get it at Walgreens. Other than that, they just – and hardly have the written paper no more. Yeah, what is it? What is, I'm old school, right? I like having a paper in my hand reading. Well, what does uh, what does it set you back? A buck fifty, two, two fifty? It's not that much. The Sunday paper no more. Okay, because it's just nothing, there's nothing to it. Uh, it. It's a it's a bygone era. You used to have Tuscaloosa news stands everywhere. You'd look forward to uh, this past Sunday, the Sunday before the season started. They always have a a, a special editorial. Uh, 15, 16 pages of all the West Alabama high school teams. You remember that? I do. They yes. have a little sports section. You miss things like it. Yeah, I just don't. Well, you I know, don't. I used to get the the preview guy when I was uh, calling high school football for County High. Yeah. I would I would go out and I'd grab the that insert that you're talking about, the West Alabama yeah. high school insert, and I'd, I'd use it all season because it'd have all the schedules and yes. all of that. But, uh, yeah, I guess, you know, we're – I don't know. Like, people like Tommy and Romulus, what do they do? Well, he likes to read newspapers. Well, I mean, I know, but I, uh, yeah, because I mean, like, <laughs> he's no internet. He's no internet. But uh, well, I, I have internet. I just don't. I don't you know. I, I know the it sounds strange. Okay. I prefer to hold a newspaper in my hand, sitting on the commode. <laughs> well, Robert, my dad that told was, me. Uh, that was too much information. <laughs> but um, does or it set in a recliner? Let's put it like it. Does it? Does it help it? Uh, I mean, does it help you go to the bathroom? I mean, is it? No, I've, I've said that joke, and I sit on a recliner and read my paper. Actually, I used to buy it in the morning and read it, read it at work. I just like the newspaper. You know, I just, there was just something about the old fashioned newspaper. You know, we just, but that's a bygone era, like most things. I knew some folks back where uh, we were from up in North Alabama. They used the newspaper not to read, but, uh, what was that? The Sears well, yeah. and Roebuck catalog. What was that? Well, people used the newspaper in my grandparents' old house used to have an outhouse, and they, they would save newspaper, and that thing be stacked high because I guess they were raised in the Depression, and they would just use newspaper, you know, or a or corn on the cob, if you ever saw that. Uh, no, I, I never, I mean, I <laughs> never used either one, but... Yeah, the corn, corn was hushed, and it, it would get soft, and they would use that, which I, okay, but that was a story told to me. That seems a little little rough, Uh I mean, but you know, well, we've, actually, we've, I guess it was soft. we've got we've got John Wayne <laughs> toilet paper here at the radio station. <laughs> no, that's Stephen DC toilet paper. <laughs> no, we we do we we have we have John Wayne toilet paper here. We've got yeah, uh, no, it's, yeah. it's yeah, rough, well. rough and tough, and don't take crap off anybody. Yeah. I mean, it, it, uh, yeah. So we we you know we we have uh, if you're used to uh, you know the aloe vera, you're used to the Charmin or the you know the. Great Northern or whatever they they make, uh, yeah, we're 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 John Wayne here. It's uh, woo. You should remember the Mister Wimple commercials. Don't squeeze the charmer. You remember that? I don't know if I remember that. You one. don't remember that? Yeah. Yeah, he would be the store owner. He maybe we squeezing the charmer because it was real soft. He'd go over and say, "Please don't squeeze the charmer." He squeezes it anyway. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Robert, he wasn't around the late seventies and early eighties. Robert, you, we, we're talking about uh, uh, bathroom activities. Maybe we should talk about Auburn. What do you think about Auburn this year? I don't. Oh, okay. I've told you before. I'm not like certain callers call in always talking about Auburn when they do Alabama. I just don't think about Auburn the week we play them. Who cares? Well, no, but we're talking about you know bathroom and poopy and stuff like uh, that. I, mean, you know, I kinda, guess it all ties in. Yeah, don't it? yeah. It just kind of you know brought me up, brought some memories back. But um, hey, Robert, we're doing a little. Um, conversation when you look at um 
the number of, well, who's going to lead this team in sacks? I was kind of curious what you think. Mm. Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, the defensive end on the on what's the defensive end's name on the LT Overton? Oh, uh, no, no, no. This is the other one. Maybe graduate. No, uh, I'm, I'm thinking about the the, the the linebacker that led the that scored against Tennessee, picking up the fumble at the end. What was his name? Uh, Deontay Lawson. Yeah. Okay. I'll stick with him. All right. How many socks do you think, Robert? Uh, six. Okay. Six for Deontay Lawson. Hey, Robert. Appreciate hey, you, man. All right, brother. Have a good one. Hey, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let's go 205-342-9904. Cowboy. Cowboy, good afternoon. You're in the game. I hope all is well. All right, Ryan. How are you doing? Man, I'm great. Super. I mean, my Cowboys are going to be undefeated, Super Bowl bound. My Alabama Crimson Tide's going to be playing for national title. I mean, uh, I have no complaints. Oh, Ryan, yeah. you, you, you just Nate Oates is going to going. yeah. Nate Oates is going to cut down the nets at the Final Four. I mean, what else do you want me to go? You may go. You may, you may continue. I mean, Cowboy, everybody, every, everybody, yeah. Oh, yeah. Omaha bound, baby. Omaha bound. Yeah. Um, I mean, this is, uh, you know, I mean, hey, Ryan, everybody's undefeated on August the 22nd. Yeah, y'all were talking about toilet paper. You know, back in the day, the pilgrims used corn cobs. That's, that's like John All right, but, but, but that's, that's like Robert just said, the corn cob. I, I, I mean, listen, man, I'm as country as you can get. <laughs> Cowboy, um, I'm from North Alabama. We're talking about back in the sticks. I mean, they don't get Saturday Night Live. In, Mountain, right? Well, it's yeah, but yeah, they don't get Saturday Night Live where I'm from until Tuesday. It's, oh, okay. it's way back there. Um, Are you as country as a sack of okra? Oh yeah, yeah, and and I'm proud <laughs> of it. I'm proud of it. I mean, I mean this this oh, accent yeah. that you hear from two to six. I mean, I have to twist some off of it. I mean, it, it's it's deep. Strong accent. You it a little bit. Oh, a little bit, a little bit. You know, I want to make, I want to sound sophisticated somewhat, but uh, yeah, yeah. So here I am, hey. but um, uh, but no, I never I used a corn cob. Have you ever used a corn cob, cowboy? No, but I guess if you had to, you might. You know, I, mean, I just can't really. I can't I've really. Been out in the woods. I've been out in the woods before. Oh, I mean, I. I mean, I've used some leaves before. Uh, the drawers or something, you know. Yeah. <laughs> or, 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 or they hit you right. You just go, and there, there might be a little creek down there. You give me a big wave. Hey, now I have, <laughs> Cowboy, I'm, oh, Lord, we're, we're right in the weeds. I mean, only. Cowboy, I've I've done the creek thing now. I've I've done the creek thing, and the, like when you're out deer hunting and you're like, "Whoa, I gotta go! I got to go!" Uh, I mean, it's not like you can carry a roll of toilet paper with you, and uh, you come out of that deer stand, you're like, "Okay, here's a creek. This is perfect." Whoa, that water's a little bit cold. Whoa. Yeah. Growing up, our farm, we didn't have a, a, a toilet paper roll. The seat of the pickup truck <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> comes in handy. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, after that experience, I think I, I started carrying a roll of toilet paper in my hunting bag. So I've got a, uh, yeah, I mean, th this is really way too much information. But I'm, I'm, I mean, I just never used a corn cob. I just can't, hey, I can't Ryan, imagine I, what a corn cob would do. I mean, I was in like the fifth or sixth grade. We had a spin night party. And this old guy named David Skinner, he got talking about, Pilgrims and corn cobs, and we never laughed a damn hard in our life, you know, talking about the pilgrims using corn cobs and stuff like that. But hey, back in the day, like that, it kind of, you know, made sense, you know? Hey. Yeah. Oh, well, we'll, let, we'll leave it there. Well, I, I know months. Kamala and Joe is trying to starve everybody to death. I get all that, okay? Yeah. Um, you, know, so, you know, no plastic I, styrofoam cups with those folks yeah so i know that you know this this is headed that way so who knows i mean maybe we'll be there you know I, maybe we gotta low back and learn some of those primitive skills yeah. um what kind of what kind of cup would you use at a tailgate party if you can't use a plastic cup to 
you know, have a good uh, vibration before the ball game. You kind of get amped up or geeked up or whatever you want to call it. I mean, you're going to use one of those clear cups that, that sweat is the kind of Well, in those, yeah, the, the paper cups, the paper straws, uh, they're worthless. They're worthless. I mean, oh, yeah. they change the flavor of the drink because you, you're, you're sucking it through paper. It just, it tastes nasty. When we were out in California at the Rose Bowl, gross, sick. Paper straws? Yeah, paper straws everywhere. They don't, they don't have plastic straws. They're illegal. And uh, Thank God I'm still in Texas. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's coming that way. I hear Texas is, uh, you know, you, you guys are in a fight for your life out there. Oh, yeah, man. I just heard today they threw out illegal illegal casted votes in Ohio already. Buckle up, Ryan. <laughs> the clown show is about to start. Well, we started our, our voting with uh, Bama Nick. We were, uh, we were voting just a couple of days ago, and, and Bama Nick won his segment. Um, he had all these illegal ballots dropped off. Then he didn't even show up at 5 o'clock, so we have removed him uh, from the election here. So Bama Nick... What I mean, are you... You put on it. What do you mark on the illegal ballot? You just touch it, and it says Kamala. Well, these these ballots here that Bama Nick had dropped off, they were just all yeses. There was no nos. I mean, he dropped off like U-Haul trucks full of these ballots. Oh. And then we had a water oh. leak here at the radio station. We don't know where that came from, but it was. Uh, oh goodness! Did it stop the polling? It did. Yeah, it did. Mm. And so, uh, but I mean. Well, hey, Ron, I got a question. For okay. You. Get a little serious. Dude. Yeah. Oh, okay. Let, now, let, let me get my morning. serious hat real quick. Yeah, I got it. Okay, now I heard I'm ready. something this morning. Okay. And I heard that we are announcing before the season starts permanent captain. They've already done that. Under, under tail of the board. Now, you, you don't I, like I'm that? i go back on Alabama football history. We've never done that except when Bill Curry was the head coach. And... I like the deal of different captains every week because it keeps guys trying to be leaders on the team weekly. You know, a guy busts his butt, plays hard on special teams, makes some big plays in the during the week and everything. And, you know, to me, in, in my high school, it was like that, different captains every week. It, that way it keeps the guys, you know, performing harder, fighting for, you know, to be a captain. It's all inclusive. You know, we're talking about, D-E-I now, you know, kind of naming captains just before the season starts and nobody else can be a captain. That's not D-E-I, you know, um, Ron. So, well, I mean, they voted. You know, I mean, they, they voted on... I uh, understand that, but, but they never have voted except under Phil Curry that year. I think it was uh, 1989 and 1988. They had captains for the, um, you know start the season. It's just Alabama tradition is we have different captains weekly, and uh, I'm going to coach Brian every year on the Auburn game. All the seniors are captains. All right, that well, that, awesome. that's know? it. That's it. I'm changing my prediction because they're not they're not doing that. I, I think this is uh, it's worth at least one or two wins. I don't I think, think they're going to make so. the playoff, Cowboy. Oh, you know, I, I, I'm not worried about it. I'm just saying Alabama tradition. We elect captains at the end of the year and they announce them at the Jefferson County banquet. But usually where the they Cowboy, announce them. Cowboy, before. Surely we're not going to hold Cayman to board all these tradi- I mean, traditions one one thing, but I mean, this is not really that big of one. I well, don't even know what you're saying what you- is um, we we, we might as well start taking statues down. Gene Stalin. No, 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 uh, I did not say that. I'm just saying wait, wait, there's wait, certain wait, 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 important Ryan, that's traditions, tradition, but I mean. That's tradition, that's tradition, Ron. They have tradition. Okay. They have new. So you're telling me there was different captains last last year? I Maybe there was an injury. That, During the season, yeah. I don't, I don't yeah, remember. I mean, I can't go out there and go, whoa, man, that, that guy was a captain yeah, last they don't week. name the permanent captains till after the season. Not oh, so you yeah, season. I thought you were talking about game captains. Isn't that the same thing? Yeah, game captains. That's, that's, you know, every week there's a game captain. But when you name permanent captains, they go out there every week for the coin toss. They're the captains. They're permanent captains of the team. I can't. Man, DeBoer's losing it. I mean, he's. I I mean, I like a little bit of change up. Maybe you can see him a box of corn cobs over there. Yeah. 
I mean, he's losing it. I mean, this this is over, Cowboy. You you you've. I mean, it, it'll be the shortest stay in, in possible. But uh, he's already, you know, being accused of tampering with uh, players from Miami of Ohio of all places. Um, okay. He's being accused of tampering with the Mac. Where'd that come from? I've been working. Oh, that. okay. Yeah, you had Chuck Martin, which is the head football coach at Miami of Ohio, said that. Uh, yeah. I'll play the audio next. How about that? I'll, I'll play it next for you. Yeah. How about that? Hey, Ryan, did you ever find a Kalen DeBoer locker room speech yet? Remember you told me you were going to kind of work on that a month and a half or so ago? Yeah, you know, no, I, I, got I, I haven't seen eight it. Eight days to yeah. game day nearly, and you, you still and have I know it. I failed. I failed. I failed as a radio host, and that's probably another couple of wins, maybe one or two. Okay. I know everybody thinks I'm probably being a J.A., you know, but. Well, you you and Alf are the two leaders of the Debbie Downers. Uh, you Alf, I'm not being a Debbie you Downer. Alf, just, you Corey. Alf and Corey and Corey Miller, Corey Miller, cowboy from Texas, and Alf like from here Corey in Tuscaloosa. He played in the NFL for Bill. Parkstead. He's he's a very very smart football guy, but yes, sir, he but is. but like he, he's Miller. also the leader of the pack of the Debbie Downer Club. You can't call somebody a Debbie Downer. Is that? Thing? Is that being sexist if I call Debbie Downer? Well, it kind of sounds like, you know, like Dan on Saturday Night Live or something. Well, I'm just saying it's, yeah. yeah. You know, Debbie Downer. Huh? Debbie Downer. He's saying you're doing Debbie Downer feels. He's feeling so bad. You've been very negative throughout the off season, So, I mean, I could, what, what would you prefer that we call you, Cowboy? Call he's gonna cowboy. He's gonna say I'm a realist. I'm a realist. I'm a realist. Cowboy's fifty fifty flip. He's either gonna flip it right or he's gonna flip it wrong. If I'm wrong, I'll admit it. But I guarantee I don't you don't be hiding now. Don't be hiding. Guarantee you this. You, this guy's never seen it. When when things go rough and you can't always be successful. It's I got you. There's always going to be some tough roads. You know, but he's never been in a program where he had to sustain it. He's always left except NAIA. I mean, they That's say the same awesome. crap about Nick Saban, no cowboy. We said the same thing. Oh, he's, wait, wait, now. Nick I Saban mean, was at Michigan State five years, so you had at least one recruiting class. He was at LSU five years, so you had at least one But that was class. that was what everybody said about him. That's what everybody said about him. He never had a recruiting class right. at Fresno. I got to run. I got to run, Cowboy. I got to run. I'm telling you the facts. I'm telling you the facts. Okay, well, I'm, I just bought, since this phone call went and bought. I will give him credit. I He's bought my tickets. So far, it's a transfer port. Hey, I just there. bought my Independence Bowl, Shreveport Independence Bowl tickets. I'll, I'll see you in Shreveport. Maybe we can meet. you got to buy that. The worst you'd have to buy would be cotton bowl. Okay, then we can hang out with you. Cowboy, I got to run, man. No, Thanks. Wait, the Cotton Bowl is the semifinal game. You want those tickets. Okay. All right. Roll Tide. Yeah. Roll Tide. We'll continue with more of the game next. Tide 100.9, 1230 WTBC. Your home of Alabama Crimson Tide Sports. Slash deal or text deal to 511511. 511. Text deal to 511511 511 today. All dogs are unique. Your dog results can and will vary. Message and data rates may apply. El Gran is the great Mexican place in Winn Dixie Shopping Center. Go over and see my friends Carlos 205 391 4555, 62 McFarland Boulevard, Monday through Thursday, from 11 until 9 30. Friday and Saturday, 11 until 10.30. Sunday, also open 11 until 9. You'll find the great daily lunch specials. You'll find great entrees, including the great fajitas. Great desserts. The kids' menu, always welcome. The call-ahead orders as well. El Gran on McFarland Boulevard. You'll find it at the Winn-Dixie Shopping Center. The flagship station for Alabama Crimson Tide Sports. Tide 100.9 and streaming on the Tide 100.9 app. away brought to you by alabama credit union i want to remind you about southern Ohio's 1530 mcfarland boulevard 1530 mcfarland boulevard always the great southern cuisine whether it's the bacon wrapped meatloaf the fish and taters the great biscuit sandwiches you can find those 
uh, some great entrees, great salads. If you're looking for a great burger, you got a great uh, yard bird, which is a great chicken sandwich. And this evening's dinner specials is the coffee rub prime rib, the smoked pork chop, the blackened shrimp over Cajun uh, linguine Alfredo. You can find that uh, if you're looking for dinner tomorrow, excuse me, lunch tomorrow, boom, boom, shrimp, chicken club, grilled or fried, or the roasted wings. And then they'll bring back uh, some of the specials that we heard about. But they'll also add uh, coffee rub, prime rib, smoked pork chop, blackened mahi, mahi with pineapple salsa. It is Southern Owl House and also the bread pudding of the week, dark chocolate espresso bread pudding. It is our good friends at Southern Owl House, 1530 McFarland Boulevard. Biscuit Bruce, we're going to get you in two minutes. Coming up next, T-Town Tide, 100.9, 1230, WTBC, your home of Alabama Crimson Tide Sports. Go inside the Alabama Crimson Tide with the Gary Harris Show. Hey, everybody. It's Gary Harris coming up Friday morning at 9 a.m. It's the TGIF edition of the Gary Harris Show. And are we going to be cranking it out for you? The voice of the Crimson Tide, Chris Stewart, will join us for an Alabama football preview. Plus, Larry the Music Man and Brett Pritchard with the Auburn Report. And your phone calls as well. That's Friday morning at 9 a.m. on the Gary It's a sensational giveaway that you don't want to miss. Play at Pearl River Resort and walk away a winner. Must be 21 or older to play. You're listening to the best sports talk show breaking down the Crimson Tide the game with Ryan Fowler on your home for Alabama sports. Tide 100.9 and streaming on the Tide 100.9 app. Right back into the game. We are going to be a little bit crunched right here with the final couple of minutes. We've got about four callers, and uh, we'll start with Biscuit Bruce. Biscuit Bruce, good afternoon. You're in the game. I hope all is well. Always great to be on Tide 100.9 with Ryan Fowler, the corn cob butt wiper of the South. No, no, I, I've never done that. It's, so, it's new. So we've gone from wiping butts to a corn cob yeah. to the Birmingham boat. I just I just got online while I was waiting and ordered best tickets I, I did too. get to the Birmingham. Yeah, I've got them in Shreveport. Uh, I tell you what, why don't we why don't we make a deal? If we go to Shreveport, right. you can go with me. If we go to Birmingham, I'll go with you. That, that's that's the deal. And, and look, we, we ain't taking Cowboy. No. We, if we take him before we play the game, we're probably going to lose by four touchdowns, no matter who we play. I mean, it's between just fact. I'm just. I mean, the fact, we're, right? we're, tomorrow we're going to nominate the biggest warrior of the off season: Cowboy, Alf, what, or Corey and Trustville. What? I don't <laughs> look. When, I, I, I played ball. I, we had we had permanent captains, which I think Alabama does, and then they have weekly captains also. Well, but because the board did I mean, it prior to the season, that means we're not so going to the playoffs. That ain't, it's, uh, the captains ain't no more a tradition. That's a coach's preference. Just like he said, last time we done this, Bill Curry. Well, that's the way Bill Curry done it. This way, Kalen DeBoer does it. We don't, you know, people think we got to fall in line. That's the way it's always been done. You know, I used to hear that crap at Ken Tuck. That's the way it's always been done. Well, I don't mean we have to do it today. That doesn't necessarily make it the best way to do it. Good point. When I played high school, I played for an All-American. My coach was an All-American at Alabama. And and we had permanent captains, which the team voted on, which just like Alabama did, and then we had weekly captains. What's the big deal? Yeah, I don't know. That's a, that's it, a ain't good, no good. Da- it ain't no tradition. Hey, Biscuit, did tradition you get your sa- – who's going to lead the team in sacks? I'm going to try to squeeze in a couple of more right here. Uh, Campbell. Okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say uh, 12. Ooh, I like that number. Uh, yeah. Actually, Corey and Trustful had 12. You want to go 13 or 11? 11. 11. Got it. Biscuit, I got to run, man. Hey, I know, man. Always great to talk to you. Hey, Cowboy, remember this, dude. We are the University of Alabama. Take that, cowboy. Take that. Biscuit Bruce, let's go to Ellen in in Knoxville. Ellen, good afternoon. You're in the game. Hey, Ellen. Ellen, 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 Ellen. No. All right, no Ellen. Uh, How about AC, Bangladesh? AC, good afternoon. You're in the game. 
Yeah. Okay. AC in Bangladesh. No more AC. Uh, let's go to Ellis, Manchester, Tennessee. How about Ellis? Uh, Ellis, are you there? Yeah, that was a good call from AC, wasn't it? It's probably one of his best. Uh, that was yeah, it's the best yeah. call I've ever heard from him. I tell you what, if he keeps bringing that, he's going to take over our Bama Nick spot. Yeah, he'll go to number one. I, I tell you what. I mean, he he's on he's on a fast track, yeah. and and then here I am. Yeah. I'm, I'm hurrying up Biscuit Bruce, and you know, and now I'm I'm sitting here, you know, lonely. Because uh, you, Corey, will, I mean, regardless, you will be the last duck through the hole. That's your Corey honor. had a good call for earlier this week. Corey from Trustville. Yeah. What did he say? What. <laughs> Talked about how you know it's a team. You know, it, you know, if if, uh, if they ain't good, you know, if if, if it's a new team and everything, so expectations are high. But you know what I mean. You know, if they don't do good, it ain't gonna be that bad. Well, and, I I really do. I think that uh, this team is. Uh, Got a chance to. Well, I think they're going to do good. Ellis, I, I think they got a chance to win a national title if they stay healthy. Uh, just got to stay healthy. That's that's the that's the trick. That's, that's a, the main, that's the best word. The it's trick a, is staying a, healthy. Yeah, it's a big, big, big word. Um, but I'm excited. Uh, I will be down there next uh, Friday. Oh, tight. Um, and ready for. a Ready for uh, Bama football to start, boy? Hey, and next week, if you're gonna call in, do the parlay picks and the score prediction. Yep. You better call in early because the buzzard will be out in full force next week. Roll time. Ellis, thanks so much, man. I got to get out of here. I got to get Jesus' well, plug. Well, well, well. Uh, we want to thank our law enforcement officers, EMTs, firefighters, first responders, highway patrol. We remind you that we call this program the game. And the only way, the only way, the only way that you can win the big game, the game of life, is to walk daily with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Big thanks to Wyatt. Big thanks to Jackson. See you tomorrow at 2 on Tide 100.9. to the game.